three, two, one. Good afternoon, morning, evening, or night. My name is Steel Doherty. This is the podcast, the first episode in a long time, a very long time, actually. Um, I don't know, I guess I just couldn't really be bothered to put another one out, and also no one wanted to do it until now. So, you know, those complications. Speaking of people who do want to do it now, though, we have the Breaking Bad Gutentag man himself. My mates, is this is what I told. Yes. Hello. The Peter. I say anything else. Don't say my name. Hello, I'm Peter. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then <coughs> in my middle section, I have Bojack Horseman's sister herself. Hello, I'm Holly. <laughs> Holly Edwards, who you may recognise from the Day in the Life video I did. Um, yes. Yeah. And we are the philosophy group chat. The three of us. <laughs> Do we have to clap ourselves in? No, it's all right. You don't have to. Awesome. But yeah, so this these are two of the best guys in the world, and I'm very happy to have them on the show. So this is cool for me. Have to be here still. Uh, yeah, I hope it's cool for you guys as well. Yeah. Um, oddly enough, the only reason it's the three of us is because the other people in our class made a group chat without us. So <laughs> we made we made our we made our own. So we stand as the philosophy, the philosophy trio, essentially. Which I think is cool. Exactly. I think it's cool. I, I mean, I, I feel like we're the best ones out of the class, so. Do you think so? I don't think there's anyone in the class who matches our sure. impressiveness. All right, sure. I mean, you guys were just saying that you basically don't know what we're doing for Miss <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> yeah, but it's not, it's not all about knowledge, I still. I guess. Other things come into play. <laughs> I guess. Why is my camera on and you guys is, isn't? I'm turning my camera off now. Thanks for that. Um, in my defense, I was told that it, this was audio recorded. It is audio recorded. I just thought it would be nice to see you guys' faces. I was, I was not prepared for a visual interaction. Ah, fair enough. Well, <clears throat> we've been doing that with um, film studies, Google Classrooms anyway, you know. I quite like doing that, I must say. When yeah. I'm ready for it, I don't mind it. Yeah, well, because... I find it kind of funny how a select few members in the film studies group chat were complaining about how they really don't want to show their faces, but they just kind of did it anyway. You know? uh, at first, I wasn't too, I wouldn't, I must say, I wasn't too keen at first, mm -hmm. um, so I, I understand that kind of view. But then, once everyone else did, I was like, okay, this isn't actually that bad. Yeah. Because everyone else exactly. is getting involved. But I can understand exactly. like, the reason why... It's not something that people want to start doing initially. That yeah. makes that that's starting to make sense. To well, me. to be fair, I think it's because um, without dishing out names, obviously, one of our teachers was like kind of pushing us to do it a bit more than the other one, who was just a bit more relaxed. You'll know who I'm talking about, but like, yeah. one of them was being a bit patronising, and the other one was just like, you know, you can keep your cams on or off. I don't care, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Exactly. So yeah. I guess that's the introduction over with. Um, I, I guess the, the one thing I wanted to bring up, which I think everyone can agree with me, is that um, Google Classrooms is... Not Google Classrooms, but the Google video chat system is kind of shit, you know? Great. Well, like, because, like, what confuses me is that, like, websites like that, like, there's tons and tons of videos on the internet of people, like, breaking into, like classroom meetups right which obviously yeah. means that these softwares are like much more susceptible to hacking and corruption and then you have a perfectly good video chat service that we're using right now discord but for some reason teachers and schools don't want to use it I, I don't... Well, I think, isn't, aren't there like legal things for reasons why they can't use discord i don't Is that know that not something are there i, was, I don't know what I'm about, to be honest. there might be i don't know maybe I don't know. I just find I just think it's weird because like one problem I have with the Google Classroom is that the audio keeps breaking up, so I can't even fucking hear what the teachers are trying to tell me, and I get really behind. And if it wasn't for the presentations they made, I would not know what I'd be doing. You know? Yeah, I get that sometimes. It's really irritating. What bugs me is the fact that we've been doing like Google Meets for like a year now, considering when the last lockdown was. Yeah. And still, without fail, 
a teacher will say, oh, sorry, can't figure this out. Still getting used to the technology. <laughs> I don't get how it's taken a year and they still don't get it. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't, I don't want to dish the boomer word out, but, you know. Like... <laughs> And that's not saying to such low levels of the internet. I still yeah, can't. yeah, sorry, my bad. <laughs> a sense of self-respect and decorum. <laughs> Fair enough. All I'm saying is, like, I don't know, if, if there isn't a legal reason, then <clears throat> fucking sign us up to Discord. It's so much easier, you know? And it's easier to, like, yeah, post although, things in the chat. Can you use your school email on Discord? Probably, yeah. You can create an account with your school email. And there's nothing holding them back. Yeah, pretty much. But yeah, school. Um, speaking of which, we're going back on the eighth, apparently, maybe, possibly. That's what everyone says, but I don't buy it. Well, we we find out on the twenty second of February. Oh, which is when? What? Is that soon? Is that yeah, that's in a week. Yeah, that's exactly a week from now. Oh, next week. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool, it's exactly fun. a week from now. I've still got a week to be able to live in this kind of fantasy world. <laughs> but I'll never go back. I wouldn't call it a fantasy world. I'd call it, like, limbo, but not unbearable. That's what well, I would call no, it. No, it's like, it's like that box thing. You know, what's his name? The, the cat in the box. Yeah. Um, it's like Schrodinger's cat. For now... The cat is neither dead or alive, and I'm more than happy. For, I'm I'm happy with that. Yeah. As soon as that box is open, it's all going to go wrong. Well, but I'm just going to live in this equilibrium for now. Um, have you ever heard of a movie called Nothing? You might remember I tried to get Sir to put it on for us in that's, the last months. Yeah, that's the only thing I remember about that film. Yeah. What well, the only thing you remember is me begging Sir to put it on. Yeah. That's it. Nothing else. What well, What intrigues me about that film is that the basic idea is that two guys who are basically social not even rejects but just uh-huh. social parasites basically like the terrible people not terrible people but parasitic in the sense that everyone just avoids them like the plague basically oh i see i understand um, and the gimmick of that film is that they like hate away everything else so that all that's left is the two of them in their house that they live in and uh, that's what it kind of, that's blame. that's what it kind of reminds me of like there are good aspects of being stuck in one place all the time. That being, you know, it's your home. It's where you're most familiar with and you like it. But the downfall being that the outside world basically, like, you kind of just forget that it's there almost, you know? Yeah, I, I get that. And then if... Like, <laughs> I go, I try and go out every day. Yeah, like, so do I. But, like, that, that film ends in a way where, like, they... Boy, does it They never... Sorry? never gonna watch it i was joking spoilers spoilers um it ends in a way where they don't go back home or anything they're just in this nothingness like just the two of them forever just best buds Um, yeah bleak bleak but funny and it's like i guess the only different that's kind of how it feels like lockdown you know it feels like it's in a place where it might never end you know yeah there'll always be a nothing part of me doesn't mind that Obviously, yeah, well, the never ending is pretty miserable. That's what I mean. It's like those uh, characters. I can work around that. Those characters in that film didn't seem to mind, you know. Uh, yeah, I get that. That's where I draw the parallels. Um, good movie, by the way. Oh, would, I watched this film now. Would recommend it. You can get it for free on YouTube. It's like it's like good what... quality, bad quality. Uh, good quality. Oh, okay, fair enough. Yeah, whole movie. I don't know what happened. I guess it's just one of those underground films that no one cares about, so they dismissed it. Probably. Yeah. Well, definitely. Um, <laughs> uh, moving on. Um, so yeah, maybe eighth of March. We'll see. It'll be nice to see everyone's faces again. Okay. Yeah. I can show off my get a bit more human contact. Yeah, I can show off my sick doctor coat. That'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen it? Have you seen it, Holly? No. Yeah, it costs like ninety quid off eBay. Oh my god. Ninety pounds. I still that is a lot of money to spend on a jacket. Yeah, well I didn't buy it. I have to it's say not, that it's not a jacket, I... it's a frock coat. Thank you very much. Is it is it the one you have on right now? Uh I was wearing it. I took it off because it's too warm in my room. But yeah. Uh, really well made, considering it's mostly polyester, but you know. Is it like a replica or yeah, um, well, there's some it's just there's, that looks similar. there's some differences here and there, but it's basically the same thing, I would say. Mm. Um, what, were you gonna, what were you going to say, Holly? Sorry. I just want to go back to school purely because I've 
bought so many clothes over the lockdown period that I need to have a chance to wear them before they go out of style. That's my main issue that's happening yeah. right now. Well, that's why I, I, I always wear like clothes in ages. I, I always wear like timeless clothing, you know, like I can't really imagine shirts like ever going out of style because like you just need shirts, you know. And I can't ever imagine like tartan ever going out of style because it's like. I don't even know what it is. I don't tartan. know what tartan is. You know, like plaid. No, no. Oh right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, like the, it's basically yeah. Scottish plaid or like the original plaid. Like that will never go out of fashion simply because it's like a cultural thing, you know. Like it's it's, it's important to where it came from. Yeah, like kilts, exactly. So I never really worry about things going out of fashion, you know. I and mean, that's quite a positive way to view everything. Yeah. 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 Like, Good way to drive forward. Des describe your clothes that you bought, Holly, and I'll tell you if they will or won't go out of fashion. <laughs> um, I bought two dresses, which are technically like play suits, but um, they look like dresses. Mm -hmm. Uh, one's blue, one's black. They've one of them's like more like a patchwork style thing, but not too obviously patchwork. Mm -hmm. um, one's long sleeve, one's short sleeve. They're both like um, sheer like mesh material. Then I bought a white tennis skirt, um, cream like flares, uh, mm -hmm. pinstripe trousers, and loads of other stuff that I can't remember. All but those words have gone over practices. my head. All sound, <laughs> all sound like things I'd be very. All sound like things I'd be very interested in wearing. Um, I'll tell you now, maybe except the flares. I don't think any of that stuff will like ever go out of style. The flare, is, the flare is on the rise. It's coming back again. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah it's coming back. Yeah. I mean, like it was like low, um, low waisted jean flares for the past like two years. Those have been in style, but those are kind of going out right now. So are they? Corduroy, that's coming back as well. Well, yeah, yeah then I would say every, ev me. everything except the flares, I think, will probably retain timelessness, so I wouldn't worry too much, Hollyhock. Hopefully. Yeah. Also, I'd love to borrow those dresses, by the way, sometime, if that's okay with you. Sure thing. Thanks. Appreciate it. They that. might be a bit small, but I'm sure they'd look great. Me. <laughs> I mean, I prefer oversized clothes to undersized ones, but I don't mind undersized ones. I'm a very progressive message here. Yeah, exactly. It's okay to wear dresses if you have balls. Exactly. And men and women I have, just think men and women I have balls, like so you can wear dresses. Considering how much taller you are than me, they might not stretch to fit. What, my balls? <laughs> Jesus Christ, Holly. <laughs> Alright, I don't want to talk about my balls anymore. Can we move on? <laughs> okay. Sweet. So, um... Well, I guess, Peter, you had some stuff you wanted to talk about, didn't you? Well, I um, was thinking about the death of cinema. Okay. Um, oh, interesting. That's about it, though. Kind of all I've got at the moment. Well, you said something about cancel culture, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Well, that kind of kind of worked its way into it, okay. um, which was because I was reading this article. God, who was it? Um, I don't remember who it was now. It was some act. Oh, it was the guy who played Elton John. Yeah. Oh, Taron Egerton. Taron Egerton. He got he got in a load of grief for um for playing Elton John because he's not gay. Mm -hmm. Um, and obviously, as someone who he's can't gay. call himself like a member of that community, like the LGBTQ community, I don't know how important my say over the matter is. Um, but as someone witnessing kind of. The rise in counterculture. I thought as Kira Knightley responded very. I thought very um, well to it. She said, "If straight actors can't play gay actors, then I'm not going to be able to ever play a straight woman again." <laughs> Which I thought was a great response because I think suddenly everyone is like, "Oh no, we can't lose Kira Knightley." Yeah. So um, I think she might have saved everyone. But it was just. I, it was. So it's just interesting to see the, the all these actors kind of. I feel like I also saw Margot Robbie got in a load of grief. People had a go at her because she was in Tarantino movie, mm -hmm. and I, and and what was it? Well, that's, and then Karen Allen, who is you know the girl from Indiana Jones, mm -hmm. she was talking about how 
in the when she started acting like and she was really big like the late seventies, early eighties. Um she was really big. She she was she was she kinda of had to stop acting because as she was getting middle aged there were there weren't any roles for her that, that people wanted to see women in. The reason why that had happened was because there was a rise in roles for older women and younger women. But the middle aged women weren't getting any jobs because yeah. of that reason. So like because of a good thing, it was a bad consequence. I mean, she was saying it's the same now with the with the rise and this kind of enforcing that the actors aren't you know abused on set and stuff. Yeah. And the result is quite a few female actors more and more worried about going into acting because people like Margot Robbie get get shunned for being in films made by kind of, by like these type of people, mm-hmm. and well, so they stop acting. So it so it kind of does the, it has the opposite effect. So um, like, with which the, is very disappointing. I just want to ask you, with this Margot Robbie thing, what is like the mentality? Is it just literally because oh Tarantino is like known well, to do you rem- be a do bit you remember there was that whole thing with um with what's her name um Uma Thurman oh and, yeah and the car accident right right so so because of that they said it was ridiculous that Margot Robbie would ag- would agree to work. With Quentin Tarantino, and also because he she apparently shouldn't have enough lines in the film, which I also I must I question that as well because I don't know if that's very fair to say because she's not the main character. Yeah, well, t- I like, think I think the anger from that stems from the fact that she's on like the poster and shit, and she's got like top yeah. billing. The things who else would you put on the poster? Yeah, There's exactly. Only three people in that film. It's a marketing decision essentially yeah and also you know you have margot robbie in the film I, who i think is one of the greatest actresses of the modern day actors she's so like versatile actresses are still actors an actress i don't i choose not to gender divide between yeah. actor and actor you know Fair enough. um nevertheless i think she's one of the best of the modern day yeah um she's so versatile her and daniel kaluuya i think are the two best yeah um, my boy daniel super acting my boy because Daniel. Because they're so versatile. Yeah. And they, they can just do it all. Like, yeah. I know he's normally type cold, like, quiet guy. But he's in a new film now, Judas and the Black Messiah. Yeah, I've been meaning to watch he, that. And he is not playing his, like, typical character. Yeah. So, I think it might be his Oscar winner. Do you think so? Yeah. Nice. He hasn't, uh, he hasn't won Oscar yet, and he needs to. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that film looks like it might do it. So, basically... Period piece. So basically, nice. So so basically, yeah. people are getting pissed off at Margot Robbie for something that basically everyone else in Hollywood has already done, which is work. With yeah, Tarantino. and also it's something that she should, that like they shouldn't have a go at her for. Yeah, how, because like think how, think about like, it this they, way. I'm like, sure that they're having good intentions, but what you know. Well, well, what's the what's the, what's the what's the point? Is the ultimate question. Like, what are you yeah, what are you it, trying it, it, to do? It, 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 now, now she's 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 trying to go away from acting, and going to produce him because of that. Yeah. It's like what you've done is you've just gotten rid of one of the greatest actresses of like of today. Yeah. Also, and like you've done it you could say you, you can still say Tarantino is like a bit of an asshole for like doing what he did. It, yeah. It's but terrible. Like, that's not Margot Robbie's fault. Like. Oh, is that she, she just should be her fault because she chooses to to act in his films? Yeah, but like right. she's allowed to do that, like. Regardless of what you say about the guy, he makes good movies and he can put good things on your resume. Exactly. You know, exactly. it's a career decision that has no involvement in Tarantino's personal life whatsoever. So I don't see what the problem is. You know, if you want to argue yeah. Tarantino's a bit of a weird creep guy, then sure. Which he is. Yeah, I, I yeah I don't care. He makes good movies. I'll I still watch them. Yeah, I mean, I've seen him in an interview and I genuinely cannot stand him. He's an <laughs> annoying person. I can't. I hate him in interviews. <laughs> but I'm still weird. I, I still, I still can appreciate his films. I think that's what also another thing today that it becomes harder and harder yeah. to appreciate someone's film if you don't like the person. Yeah, and that becomes very difficult. And and all all that does is ignore the context of the of the film. Yeah, and, and of any piece of art, books, paintings. Yeah. Well, speaking of cancer yeah, culture, I don't, I don't, I don't want to dig myself in a hole. So. Speaking of cancer culture, Peter, what's your opinion on um? that mandalorian actress actor who got fired or whatever well i have mixed views on that because in the end she's part of the product right yeah the actors are, 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 are when they're in the film they're a product so yeah. whatever they do that that isn't directly correlated to the film that causes unrest 
Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, just don't do that when you're when you're trying to get a role and when you're doing a film because it's actually well, I when when I don't I don't know if I think it's it's entirely fair. Or I don't know if it's if it's technically anti-Semitism or not. Well, uh, it, it was what she it was s- iffy. What she said exactly was, um, I think she said political intolerance in Germany is like comparable to that of what Germans did. She, to yeah, she, she, she compared the. Um, the she, she was acknowledging that the the way that Nazism in Germany rose and and, and anti-Semitism rose in Germany was similar to the way that the anti-Republican view in America is rising, which I don't think is a wrong thing to say, but I think in her position, I think the way she phrased it, I think the fact and the, and the fact that she's she's selling a product, yeah. I think she had she must have realised that was that she was going to get what was coming. Well, because like at the same time, like cancel culture is toxic as fuck, and I hate it, but she she's she's just a fucking idiot at the same time yeah like she's, she's to blame not she's, for she's because, said so many what, stupid how do you not realize things. well because like you know what she did with like making fun of like non-binary people on her twitter bio or whatever like i she, don't but, know anything about her well, basically that like, like i haven't even watched Amanda, don't worry. well basically she, she put in her twitter bio beep slash bop slash boop which is like a piss take uh, on he uh, she yeah. they and like, don't get me wrong, you're allowed to joke about whatever you want and everything, but at the same time, it's kind of just like, why? Like, yeah, what's the point? If, if, if you're, you're a comedian do, doing, doing like, a set, yeah. fine. When you're just some person, like, on Twitter, no one yeah. just, like, what is it, how how does it hurt you if, if, if people want to live their own life in their own way? How If it doesn't affect, like, affect you in any way, just, what is the big issue? Just get asked. Um, yeah, uh, not, exactly. not to the, not to the, like, people identify as doing things I'm, I'm talking about her yeah exactly she should get lost also she <laughs> she spread like covid misinformation and she had like a an account She's, on that like app i think for, like, she, i think i think she knew theories. it was coming to be honest i think she did it on purpose do you think so publicity well, i now, think she was well, tired now, of being now a Lauren, and she wanted to be killed off quickly and she did it publicly now she, talking about now her. she's working on um she's working on um what's it called um she's working with ben shapiro's production company now <laughs> He's one, you know what? He's one I got mixed feelings about as well. Ben Shearer makes me laugh so much. But he's like the biggest he's cunt so on the planet funny. at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because he's it, doing it, like. I'll, I'll tell you who I really have mixed feelings about. Who? A Jordan Peterson. I don't know who that is. Because he's 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 like a Ben Shapiro type. But mm-hmm. I really don't agree with his politics. I yeah. really, psychology is. He, he's like a psychology professor. And his psychology is so interesting. Yeah. Everyone just has a go and be like pro Nazi. Well, she isn't. Apparently, Ben it, Shapiro is doing like film reviews now, like on his channel, and he's arguing like really? every film in some way is like a conservative film or whatever. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. I, think, I don't know how. Yeah, that seems a bit silly. Yeah, and he made that new film that came out, Run, Hide, Fight. Have you Have you guys seen that? Uh, it's just a bad. No. It's just a bad film. Like regardless of its politics or whatever, it's just an over the top, silly, die hard in a school mess. And you can kind of tell that it's been produced by like conservative people that are like pro gun and everything. It's so stupid. <laughs> I don't know. I think he just saw a like, market. conservative for America or conservative for, for England because they're uh, too Ameri- it's an American people. film. American. It's American because yeah. like the conservatives and the Democrats in America. Yeah. It's like a spot the difference. Like, Holly, it's like three things are different about Holly, them. do you have an opinion on any of this? Um, well, when it comes to films, you two are the ones that know a lot about them. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I don't really have much to say. Well, I mean like can- I mean like cancel culture but, and that. Do you have anything to say? Yeah, cancel culture, um, I have a lot to say. Okay. I think it's terrible. I think it's so awful because it's a really fine line between educating someone on what they've done wrong and then using that as an excuse to just tear someone down for your own fun. Yeah. I mean, I was on TikTok the other day, um, which yeah. is where a lot of cancel culture is. And um, this one girl, her, she was on like Omegle and she was talking to this girl who was white and she said the n word and she had filmed her um and just showing like how terrible it was obviously Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. then thousands of people set out to find who this girl was 
and they ended up finding the wrong girl. They leaked oh, her address. They leaked her oh, school no. details. People were emailing the school oh, no. um, saying that she should be expelled and all of this when she hadn't done anything wrong. I think it can be really, really dangerous to people's well, lives. Well, that's if their address has been leaked. It completely could ruin her whole um, education and future career yeah. because yeah. of people making a mistake online as to who they thought it was. So, um... That's like, have you seen that, that Cecil Hotel documentary? No. Oh, I've got that on my watch list. I'm yeah, I, I, then I won't say anything, but that uh, that ties into a little bit. I won't say anything more. Is that with, um, Eliza Lamb? Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's, it got quite, it, it's got quite a bit of hate. It, it's not great. Oh, yeah, I, I've, I heard, would I've heard it's it a piece of shit. I've heard it's a piece of shit. Yeah, it's not great. But but the thing is, right, people watched the first three episodes and and, and decided something, mm -hmm. which is a fair decision to make. But then, without watching the fourth episode, the three episodes, like, seem really dodgy. Yeah. And the well, fourth episode fixes it all, and it becomes clear what, what the point of, of the documentary was, in fact. Yeah. You have to watch all four episodes. The only things I know about it are that it's about Elisa Lam, and apparently there's like this guy they have in it who's like crying and talking about her like he knew her or something. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sister. So all that all that happens in the first three episodes, and people <laughs> got really uncomfortable with it because they thought, you know, like, what is this? Is this like some sort of um, like abuse in this case to get money and like to to get lies and stuff? But then the last episode fixes all of that and it makes it clear what it kind of was about. Um, okay. Would recommend it for that reason. Fair enough then. Is that all we have to say about cancel culture? Yes, I don't like it. I think it's terrible. I yeah. think I think we should educate people on their mistakes. Yeah. But well, like, interesting enough, that Mandalorian, that Mandalorian girl, and what I said about that well, woman, it's not girl. <laughs> uh, what she said, of, what oh. I was saying about her and the pronouns mockery thing is Pedro Pascal actually like told her like why you just shouldn't do that and you just look a bit like a dickhead for doing it. Like mm. all you have to do is sit down and talk to these people, you know, and well, that's you awesome. might be so, able to re-educate them. This brings us to a very interesting question. Yeah. Um. So we know the rider. Yeah. Who I think is a great actress. I don't know if you guys have seen Stranger Things. I'm, I'm a big fan. Yeah. Uh, I watched the I first season. Like and, I didn't finish it. Um, she, for a long time, wasn't in anything because she had she she was doing a stream of robberies. She was kind of she she I, I think I, I I don't know. So if, if I'm wrong, don't blame me. I th I think she she was quite severely depressed, or she, I think she was abusing drugs a lot as well. And anyway, she kind of lost the plot. Um, and she and she got and she ended up getting down for quite a few robberies. Now she's back. And she's great, and I'm pleased she's back because I strongly believe in rehabilitation and yeah. retribution. Um, then, when you say something like, I'm trying to think of what someone that isn't in space because I know I always use him. Um, <laughs> but no, but I, I think that's important. If, take someone like Louis C.K., for example. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think he's a very nice guy anyway, but let's just use him as an example, ignoring the fact that he doesn't seem nice. Yeah. Should, why do we decide that he can't be rehabilitated, but we're never right account? I just, I think, I think it's time that we've said that everyone can be rehabilitated, given given enough effort. And I think that all these people, even at Harvey Weinstein, because he's going to die soon anyway, <laughs> there are certain people who I genuinely think right. that we, have, we can't just decide right that. So, like someone like Louis C.K. or Kevin Spacey, even, who has been branded on the same level as Harvey Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein raped so many women, right? Yeah. Like actual rape, right? And then, and then he comes basically, um, had two sexual harassment cases against him. Six. I don't think it's fair to put this in the same list of severity and, and intent on harm. Mm -hmm. UCK doesn't even touch them. Obviously, I'm not saying, I'm not saying what he did was right, okay? And I'm strongly, you know, very for them paying for their crimes. But I don't, personally, I don't agree with our prison system anyway. Um, I think we should all follow the Norwegian prison system. I think we do have to look at ourselves and go, can pick can. Where do we draw the line of these people being allowed to come back, mm -hmm. and why do only certain people are, are why only certain people are allowed to come back? Is it because we view some people as just victims and others as not victims? But then, how do we decide that? Why have we decided that Winona Ryder was probably a victim of of kind of her time and like her situation? Which I think she was, but why why can't the other ones be? Why can't I can't like 
put in his face to be like a victim of, of like assault as a child and, uh, and he just needs to have a lot of therapy to kind of fix him. I can't, why do we, uh, why do we set these boundaries for these people? We really know nothing about them. Well, I was, I was actually going to ask you, Peter, do you care to expand on your um, complicated relationship with Kevin Spacey? So, you know, for me, I'm, you know, I, I'm aware that Kevin Spacey is guilty. And it's like, okay. I thought you thought he was innocent. No, 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 no. I, <laughs> that, 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 it might, that, that was genuinely joking. Okay. Um, I, I've always believed that Kevin Spacey was guilty of what he was charged with, not what the press tried to charge him with, but yeah. I don't believe in trial by media anyway. Mm -hmm. I never have. Um, but you, I, I, you, I ignore the press. You think that as a person, Kevin Spacey deserves rehabilitation in the same way that everyone, like... I think everyone deserves rehabilitation. Yeah. Or an attempt at rehabilitation. Except Harvey Weinstein. At least, at least even to be honest, it, it, if we had enough time, even Harvey Weinstein deserves rehabilitation. But he has to actually rehabilitate. Yeah. So I'm not saying you know, these people come out and they pretend. They have to actually have rehabilitation and that's where it becomes difficult yeah okay well what um, what about r kelly for example because like... again i think i think in theory everyone can be rehabilitated yeah, with enough he's... time but... and enough effort and therapy see i think that's an example of someone who just <clears throat> never learns because like okay so the guy why, no, but why doesn't he learn well because the guy he actually went, he's went blinded he, by his wealth. He went on trial for like six years, right? He was arrested in 2002 and wasn't acquitted until 2008, right? And then he goes straight back to like having sex cults. And like apparently the day after his trial, he actually took like a 16 year old to his house and had her like fucking dance for him outside of his pool. No, no surprises there. And but we then, have to look at these... But, like, he went to jail... People, hold on. He went, he went to jail a couple years ago, right? Or, like... Sorry, I don't think he went to jail, but, like, everything started coming out again. And then, sure enough, he went to jail again. And as soon as he got out of jail, like, the rule being have no contact with any underage girls, the first thing he does is go to McDonald's and is surrounded by, like, underage female fans even though he He's... he has a responsibility to say to them i'm sorry i can't be near you right now i'm in trouble with the law for being his, like an actual now, i don't pedophile. know much about his case other than the weeing and the, <laughs> and the most, and, I don't, you know i don't i don't follow it much because it's not really my cup of news my anyway. job um, but, but but nevertheless um the at fault there is his mental state and, and the prison system mm -hmm. the prison system doesn't work so what, what, these people shouldn't be judged. They get 15 years in prison or whatever. That's not going to help them. We we have evidence to show that doesn't help them. We have to stop assuming that when someone comes out of prison, they become good people. Yeah. That's not how it works. We have to we have to change it. We have to change the system so so that so they own, so they come out as genuinely good people. Norway has um a, a um so the people who go back to prison. Mm -hmm. under, who have been in prison at least once is below is under twenty percent. In this country, we have eighty percent reoffended. Mm -hmm. Eighty percent of people who go to prison will go back to prison in their lifetime. That's yeah. insane. That's, that shows that the system not only is flawed, it doesn't work. Yeah, because we're using it as a state, as a state of, of of only punishment. As Norway has only rehabilitation, yeah. and that works. We've we've. Where that's another thing. I think we ignore all these different issues because we can say, oh, well, you know, R. Kelly hasn't changed and he's been in prison. That means he can never change. He, he can never change because the system don't, isn't ever going uh, gonna to help him. We have to remember that these people, they're not, he's, he's unwell, right? Yeah. I mean, in, 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 he's not like, it's, I don't think he's completely free will. It's like even Michael Jackson, for example, he did apprehensible, abhorrent acts. Yeah. But, I think, given enough time and enough therapy and enough um, effort to try and make an upstanding member of society, I think you could. Yeah. Because I think well, the problem with Michael Jackson was he was like he was like he was he was like stuck in a he was stuck in like an actual fantasy land, you know. He's entirely like, completely sick. Yeah, exactly. Like he's broken. He he wasn't well. Yeah. I'm not saying I, I'm, I'm not saying any of that um, is. I'm not trying to justify any of these these things. Um, yeah. I'm not trying to say that makes them better people because it doesn't. But I think they can become better people. Yeah, that's where it's important. I think obviously he, he's a terrible person. I think everyone at, at least one point in their life is a terrible person because I think 
people have have terrible thoughts, but, but but we don't we don't make you know we don't act upon them. And I think if if the desire to act upon them is so strong, you have to look at that he must be unwell, and yeah. so the punishment is does not work in this situation. What do you think, Holly? Me. Um, I think to do with the prison system that we have in this country, I think it's not very helpful at all in terms of um, rehabilitating people and and how, like, I feel like there should be, um, like, a separation independent on what crime you commit. I think that, and looking at people's backgrounds, I feel like throwing every, what, what we consider to be a criminal in one place isn't going to be helpful to anyone. Yeah. Well, cause like sending uh, sending someone who got arrested on like weed charges to the same prison as like someone who murdered six people, like yeah, you know that's fucked up. Um, I mean, I didn't know a lot about it to be honest. I I research a lot about like serial killers though, and I don't have any sympathy for them. <laughs> um, well, yeah, those those people are just actual nice monsters. Them. I would say. Sorry. Nice talker. I'm watching it right now. And last oh, night so I was good. um reading about um the toy box killer who is probably one of the worst people I've ever read about in terms of I think I the know torture that he about. put his victims through. Um and there was like a transcript of the tape that he would play for them mm-hmm. but uh when he first kidnapped them and it was just the most awful thing. Um but then, so looking at all of that, I, I find that stuff very interesting. And it's yeah. it's what I want to go into. So I, I'm studying... Uh, I'm no. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me. Um, but I'm at university. I'm going to study psychology with criminology and then hopefully do like a master's oh, in cool. like forensic psychology. Yeah. Um, so I then just find so it surely the desire to, to study the mind of these people shows that... Uh, that the interest in the fact that somewhere in them there is some sort of human but they, they still have the capability because if something is, is added is, is changed in their system that makes them so sick something can be changed back or can be attempted to change back to make them human again yeah well it's it's also know. just understanding their their past and what shaped them into who they are i mean it's a lot of i mean obviously there's still going on like nature nurture debate Mm, yeah. um, quite a lot of child abuse and quite a lot of their histories. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Most serial thing. killers would have been subjected to abuse in their childhood. Um, there's always, I mean, nine out of ten times there's something that's happened in the past. Um, mm. And I, I just think it's very interesting looking at the statistics behind all of it. Um, and obviously the majority um, of killers being males and how um as a society we've kind of uh kind of ingrained like gender bias into everyone mm-hmm. and i think that's an issue in itself which has never fully been depicted um so i just mm. think it's very interesting i mean it, it it's a it's a it's a massive thing and there's so many factors to it um but I just think it's very interesting. I was also I was also reading about the um the what they call the Menendez brothers who killed their parents. Oh yeah. And they um their reasoning was the sexual abuse from their father that mainly um Eric had experienced during his childhood and into his teenage years. And they were put into prison for life without chance of parole. They were also separated, the two brothers, because the jury considered them to be like, not the jury, the court considered them to be a threat if they were to be put together, which didn't make any sense considering they didn't have any priors. Um, it was just the murders of their parents. And I yes, think again, it's the just... Failed society. I think and will continue to do so. It has failed us so many times, and I think it's no one ever really looked at it properly. And I mean, if it was um, 
a female, it would have been a completely different story and it would have been seen as defence and it wouldn't have been seen as such a malicious crime. It's interesting you say that. Do you know that Eileen Wernos case? Sorry? Do you know the Eileen Wernos case? No, I don't. Eileen, Eileen Wernos was like, the most famous female serial killer. Um, and she was this woman who killed 10 men. She was a prostitute. And she claimed they were all in self-defence. And for a long time, it was passed in that. And then one day, she like, after quite a bit of evidence, it became clear that in fact she was just complete. She just like enjoyed. And the, the reason why she was a prostitute was because she wanted to be able to make it easier to kill these people. Um, and they made like films about her and everything, like to sympathize with Eileen Wynos. And and then the whole time she was like tricking everyone because in fact she was just she was just abusing the fact that our society we sympathize more with with um, female attackers. Nice. Very interesting. When your film goes, check out her case. when your film goes from a ninety percent fresh to a forty percent rotten on Rotten Tomatoes, <laughs> <laughs> when you when you realise the film was just completely wrong or whatever. Um, also, Myra Hinton. Yeah. Charlie Stone. Nice. Well, I think, it was very I think I've heard of this well. film actually. I've been meaning to watch it. Yeah, it also, what what I wanted to say was which. I have I I haven't heard a lot of people talking about and it's just completely my take on it. But I think with a lot of serial killers in terms of like the documentaries and the movies we make out of them, I think it it, it almost goes to a point of kind of glamorizing these serial killers and putting them on a pedestal. Yeah. And no one ever remembers the victims, which I think is awful and putting them putting these criminals in like a state of celebrity. Yeah. I mean, mm. there are people who have, like, Twitter groups where they're worshipping, like, Ted Bundy, thinking he was the most yeah. amazing person. <laughs> yeah, and I just exactly. think that's so awful in terms of how the media can portray these people and how that can affect the youth. Well, that's also very interesting. Have, have you looked at the OJ case? Yeah. Yeah, and where, in the court case, the trial was obviously... And the media was always centred around OJ Simpson. Um, but... The, the to the two lawyers who were fighting against OJ, the only people who were ever mentioning the, the guy who was killed by them. So you have the you have the girl, is it like Nicole, Nicole yeah. Simpson, and then there's the other guy. Everyone forget, I forgot the name. Everyone forgets the name. Yeah. It, but, but, and, and like since the court case, he like the, the, this lawyer continued trying to like remind people there were two victims, and everyone just kind of forgot about it. Yeah. Because they were fascinated by this guy. There was a comedian on the day that. OJ was trying to made a funny joke. He said, um, "Well, folks, the LA, uh, the California law system has legalized murder." Um, <laughs> so it was very funny. Jesus Christ, that guy's a fucking lunatic. Yeah. Um, well, interesting what you were saying about glorifying serial killers. Um, I, I kind of find it funny how in most of his depictions in like movies and stuff, Ted Bundy's always like a really good-looking like total but charming that, guy he was famous to be good looking he was like charming good looking yeah, that but was, like, he wasn't he, was. he wasn't really that good looking i think he was i, I think, thought, was I think he's really quite i, I think time. i think he's quite average looking like he's got a very creepy face like especially his eyes and in all of these movies yeah. he's like a zach braff like really but i think, gorgeous I think guy. that's because they're trying to contextualize it because back then you know, what was still attractive isn't the same as it is now so I think they're trying to make it so of this guy that looks um maybe kind of but like I don't even f- I don't even think he was day. was he even that charming I swear he just like walked he up was, he, no, he, he, he he like no, he was supposed to he be was quite charming yeah, I thought I thought it was the got away with it for so long. I thought and it then, was I thought it was just that he walked up to people told them a lie and then used that lie to kill them that's what I think. It, it was a factor that he was a young guy who was yeah. considered quite good looking and he had and a charming. charming personality which yeah. made made him seem like not to be a threat to his I mean, victims. The jury afterwards, they all said that the if he had a lawyer, they would have they would have said he was he was innocent, but he defended himself in court. He was his own lawyer. Yeah. That's why they found him guilty. Because of that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. That's not... like with um Dennis Nielsen, who was in Muscle Hill, if anyone knows. Oh, yeah, like a, Des. A yes. local serial killer. Uh, they yeah. got David Tennant to play him, and David Tennant's a very good-looking guy. 
See, I, 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 dis I disagree. I don't think David Tennant's ugly, but I do think he's not hot enough to play someone like Des. That's all I'm gonna say. I thought it was very good <laughs> casting. Like he sold the role. Like he, you can tell that he kind of made himself look a bit more geeky and weird. Like the faces he was pulling, the eyes he had, the glasses, the haircut. Like, cause Des was not a good looking guy. He was a very creepy pedophile looking man. And I think yeah. David Tennant sold that pretty well. I just think it's like my crush on him from back in like Doctor Who days. Yeah. But um, the actual Dennis Nixon is not. Better. No, a Christopher Eccleston. Person. Christopher Eccleston's the best out of the new Doctors, I think. Well, let's have a picture of Dennis Nixon. He, in, my, in David Tennant's defense, he looks identical. Yeah, exactly. Oh He's... my god, he looks so nice. So <laughs> He's a slightly what? better looking version of a serial killer. If any, Dennis Nilsson is chubby around the face. That's yeah, the David Tennant's quite skinny, you know. It's really, really weird. Yeah, exactly. I, I, it's just, it's just a case of excellent casting, I think, you know. Yeah. But uh, I guess to sort of separate away from all this horror, um, <laughs> Holly, <laughs> did you have anything you wanted to talk about? We, me and Peter, Peter and I have had our chances. Is there oh, anything? Sorry, I mean, there any, ever, there anything? You, do you want to bring anything to the table? Uh. Well, I, I hadn't I hadn't like arranged a talking topic. Um, I don't know. I don't feel I have much to say. I've talked a lot about serial killers. I know a lot about those, but that what's your is... opinion on abortion? <laughs> um, my opinion on abortion. I am pro-choice. Mm -hmm. Um, and I always so that one is that the one where where like is that, that's the pro-abortion one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing because it. I'm not pro like. Abortion, I, like abortion, to me, I don't think is something to like throw around. Like, I'm not saying that everyone should just get an abortion. Like, it's yeah. like popping to the shop to get a chocolate bar, right. um, because I think it is a very sensitive topic in itself. But I am very much pro-choice that it is, um, it's their own body; they can decide what to do. Yeah. Yeah. Especially in cases, um, which I think is awful. How anyone could say pro-life in terms of cases of rape if a 12 year old girl got Great. pregnant yeah Great. how how do you have it in you to say that she has to birth that child yeah exactly because well, the problem is with those arguments that is it's always um like for very religious people most of the time it's very religious people arguing yeah. that you're um, gonna burn in hell you fucking baby killer here's, here's the thing like this is where their argument becomes so like nonsensical it, at that point, when when the abortion occurred, in early stages of the abortion, like right, early stages of, of the of the development, when an abortion normally happens, there's mm. a point where the where, the, where the, like the cells can still become a twin, it can still go from twins to being a single. Right? Yeah. So how do they explain that in their almighty wisdom? Right? Is that is that the soul becoming two, or is that a soul become like at this point? What what else can we not do? You know, scratching your nose like kills nine million cells that all have the potential to <laughs> theory, make their way to either the egg or the sperm and then become a child. So you can't scratch anything. Right? Yeah. So all these. I'm, I'm scratching was, my fingertips like, right now. Is that killing my it, sperms? I still, you are a mass murderer. Oh shit! <laughs> if, it, if it were up to the evangelicals, you'd be burning in hell for eternity. Oh my god! But don't worry, because they're all peaceful. <laughs> the thing is, you know all the people who are making the decisions about this, and the majority of them are men who yeah. seem to think they have this control over another person's body, which is just wrong in itself. Oh, you just reminded me of the, the, the Jehovah's Witness. Jehovah's Witness, oh. they're fucked, man. Seriously. Worst religion on the planet, I would say. Worse, oh, just hard to disagree. Worse than Scientology, worse than Satanism, worse than anything. I think they're all on par with each other, pretty much. Nah. All the ones just to Well, because if you think about Jehovah's Witness, they actually, like, actively prey on, like, small communities and basically turn them into cult figures, you know? Like, at least you can say, like, other religions give you a bit more of a choice, but if you're a Jehovah's Witness and you leave the faith... You can never talk to your family ever again, basically. That's, that's like, that's the same with, um, any extremes. Civic Jews, um, you have, um, the, like, Mormons. Um, what's the other one? That they get the, the pilgrim, not pilgrims, what are they called? Amish people. Yeah. 
so it's all it's all the extreme ones once you leave like everyone just ignores you yeah but like what i'm everyone saying is those are religions that have like extreme angles but yeah. Jehovah's Witness is just all extreme. Nothing about it is but, like. No, safe. but Jeho Jehovah's Witness is the, is, is like the same Jews of um, Christianity of, of Catholicism. Oh really? It's like yeah, they 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 they're all part of the, the Christian based system. It's very extreme. Yeah, I, so I get. All... I get, but like when comparing like Jehovah's Witness to like like I said, my grandparents are like Catholics, like they're traditional Catholic people. Yeah, same mind. But mind, like. Mind, mind. But like they like they don't like not talk to like me or my dad for like not being religious no, or anything. That, that's because know? they'll be like like normal. Yeah, exactly. Or Catholic. Whereas Jehovah's Witness are the like the extremists. Yeah, that's yeah, that's like, what that's, um, that's like what I'm, really really like. That's what I said. Like, really Peter. orthodox Jews. Yeah. That's what I said, Peter. <laughs> oh my God, sorry. That's what I was trying to say. At least I don't know. Maybe I worded it funny. But yeah, uh, least favorite religion. What were we talking about again? Oh yeah, abortion. Um, I was not expecting you to actually go with that, but well done, Holly. Your, your... I was watching a video about it last night. Oh really? <laughs> loads of videos. I found like a few videos, like um, uh, pro-choice people versus pro-life people, men's right activists versus See, feminists. What... They're all quite interesting videos. What I hate about those videos is that it's just people shouting at each other for no reason, because like you're not going to change the other person's mind. Like they're going to walk away with the same opinion as before. They're not going to think about anything you said, and the whole argument was just I'll tell you what. It more just infuriates just... me because I'm watching the whole argument but can't say anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I'd rather actually sit down and talk to them myself, you know? What, as always, what annoys me about today is that everything is political now. Yeah. That's something that bugs me. I'm going to be honest. Well, I, wasn't... I get tired of that. See, that's funny because I wasn't trying to be political. The only reason I asked Holly that question was because of a joke in a video. You know um, that YouTuber, I Hate Everything? He, he made like a commentary about a movie called Psycho Shark with his brother. And oh, I didn't know that. the movie was so boring that they would just started talking about other random things. Uh -huh. And then his brother, his brother asked him, what's your opinion on abortion? And because his name is I Hate Everything, he was like, well, uh, my next video, actually. And then they just started laughing. And I thought it was the funniest thing I'd ever heard in my life. What's your opinion on abortion? Well, uh, my next video, actually, because, you know, I might hate everything. I thought it was funny. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll link you guys the video. It'll be funny. Trust me. But yeah, that's our opinion on abortion. I, I would say I'm pro-choice, just to be clear. As would I. I am pro-whatever means people can do what they want. Yeah. <laughs> Don't want that one. <laughs> so does that mean that pregnant people can walk around as KKK members if they want to? Absolutely. 100%. If you want to be a member of the KKK, okay, that's up to you. But at least be educated first. Yeah. Like, at least let people educate. So, have you heard? There's this guy, Daryl or something, and he's this jazz musician. Mm -hmm. um, and he got a load of grief because he was like this black guy talking to all these KKK members. And he was like befriending them. And everyone was like, What are you doing? And he ended up getting 207 KKK members converted. Yeah, exactly. He, he, like, he like just chatted with them. And he was like, Yeah, okay. But, you know, you realise that you're having a drink with me in this bar and I'm a black guy and you're a white guy. And, like, and, and, and like, they became friends. They could, like, talk for ages. And yeah, they I... realised that they were basically... Which, so, Bob Dylan has a very good song about it called Only a Pawn in Their Game. Yeah. And, and it's based on about how all, like, all the, the really, like, hard racists, like, a lot of the hard racists in America yeah are just uneducated and they're just like used as props for, for politicians to do things but yeah no, no one ever tries to educate them and try and like explain to them without yelling at them and telling them that ideologies are wrong yeah but the reasons why their views don't stand the and test people, of time know, they have the capabilities to no longer be racist and, and we, we have evidence of this yeah but i don't spot all that I think I think I and social media should try and promote conversing with all these good people yeah. but instead it does the opposite We've we've come so far in this thing that we're now going the opposite direction. We're not promoting co com conversing with people of different points of view. We're actually promoting actively hating them. Yeah, I think that's so negative. Did you see that documentary, The Social Dilemma? I did. Yeah, like it kind of tackles that a little bit. Like also, yeah. you know, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, you're right. I think people should probably learn to sit down and just 
talk to each other a bit more, you know? Yeah, and I think that's why, yeah. Sorry, go on. Um, no, I mean, I, the book that I bought, which came whilst we were, um... Yeah, I noticed you put it on mute a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got my book. Yeah, um, cool. it's, it's called White Fragility, Why It's So Hard For White People To Talk About Racism, mm -hmm. which um, I was very excited to get. Um, and it's kind of just, I mean, yeah, talking about why it's so hard for white people to talk about racism and how it's kind of, for me personally, I don't think it's enough as a white person myself who's grown up in um, England, lived in London basically my whole life. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's enough to kind of say I'm not racist because... I think I should be constantly educating myself if I have the resources to do so. Because it can be the tiniest things, the tiniest unconscious thoughts that we've just learned as we've grown up in our predominantly white society. Mm -hmm. um, well, so, <laughs> well, cause I, 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 a few months ago, Peter, I don't know if you remember this, but um, we were walking out of school together and I proposed my theory that everyone is in some way innately like racist like because as human beings i feel as though everyone is like scared of like anything remotely different you know like even if they don't yeah. even fully feel it or realize it if you see something that's even slightly different to you you will probably deep down think to yourself that's different and there's something about it i don't like you know Mm. well that's the thing that's why we need to like talk about it more because what i find is not to like group like people all together like not to say that this goes for every white person ever mm -hmm. but a lot of the time when i find that you start a conversation about racism to a group of white people a lot of the time pe they'll, they'll kind of take it as you're blaming them and it's a conversation yeah. of blame and everything that we've done wrong but yeah. at this point, you know, that's not what we should be trying to do. We should just be looking at the history and the facts and listening to people of colour to see how they've been discriminated against and what we can do to help. Yeah. Not just constant when it, it shouldn't be that whenever white people hear the conversation of racism to automatically assume that they're being blamed or targeted mm. for something because they're not. And I think it's just people kind of need to get over themselves <laughs> and just be able to educate themselves on the matter. Agreed. Yeah, but, and so I think that, that part of the problem lies with people who do get very aggressive when it comes to those type of conversations. Yeah. So you have a lot of cases where, in, where, where you're talking to people and immediately they'll basically class off as everyone who is like, like for example, like white Southern American. Mm. As in, not from South America, as in the South of America, like the Southern states. Southern states, yeah. Are are, are racist and therefore are like bad, um, and and I think part of doing that closes off possibility to to try and spread a message of you, you can actually change your your ideology. So you know all those like a lot of those posts which are this is why you're racist and this is what you need to do to change. Yeah, I think the way that. Obviously, I'm talking as an expectant of a middle class white person, so yeah. I'm sure it's very tainted, um, <laughs> almost definitely. But I think, but obviously, I can't really talk from another point of view um, in a completely truthful. I've, you know, I've tried to watch as many different scholars talk about different things, but I think in the end, it is in the end, like what, why, why, the way I view it all. Um, I think th there is a feeling of they try and not when I say they. I'm not saying black people, just to be clear. That's why I'm saying they, as in like certain like different people. Uh, uh, not trying to group anyone together. I'm very progressive. Um, um, I think I think you do have like an issue of people trying to sympathise by blaming. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And like, like not. Um, I don't know. Like, I think. Maybe, maybe like the idea of like white guilt plays a big role in this. Like people trying to like be like allies by doing so, they get more people against them because they just shun anyone who doesn't immediately agree with them. 
that's what it is, is people like shun anyone who doesn't immediately agree with them and then no one has a conversation about it anymore. Just yell at each other. Yeah. That's such a regressive way to do it. Yeah. Don't help. Yeah. Do you know what I, I found quite interesting, which, um, I mean, Peter made a good point. Uh, whilst we're talking about any of this, we are three white people who have gone to a very, like, middle-class school and live around a very middle-class area. So, obviously, we don't speak for anyone but ourselves. Uh, um, my yes. granddad is Jamaican, thank you. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, yeah. He is, he is. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, whilst we're talking about this, I mean, we're probably going to make mistakes about this. But yeah. it's about yeah. how we can... I should, have, know, I should have said that in the beginning, actually. This. this is three teenagers who don't know what the fuck they're talking about, just to be clear. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're expressing... <laughs> things on that I said will come off. This is why, this is what always happens in film, where I dig myself in a hole. <laughs> I, I do all the time. No, but what's good about what's good about, about this Alan. what's good about this Don't Peter? We we're, we're not in film studies, um, so there's no one here to yell at you no, and tell you that you're wrong. I don't, yeah, but I, I don't know who's gonna be listening. And you know, in like twenty years, when someone hears me say like some sort of crazy thing, they're gonna go, "Well, he said this twenty years no, ago." No, but Peter, yeah, what, this, what this is, in what's, like twenty what's, years? Peter's like a famous director and yeah. cancels for this. What's that about as well? As if as if we're now blaming people for something that's thirty years ago. People change. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, if, Shane 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 Dawson is um, an example of something where I think it was a bit justified because, <laughs> like, the but old like, the I'm old Kevin shit that Hart. he did was so shit. Like, take Kevin Hart, right? Yeah. Did, did he say? I don't know. I don't know how. If I'm allowed, to, I don't know what he said. Well, oh, are you I think talking about how he said, cheated on his wife? Hmm? No, said... no, no. I think. Well, I, I think. I think. I don't fully know. I know that he got he basically they tried to cancel him for stuff he said on Twitter like fifteen years ago. Mm-hmm. And like people like ignoring the fact that fifteen years ago people well, could fifteen like, years ago. You could. Yeah, it's like you could say that. Yeah. Like there was no people didn't have an issue with it. Yeah. They, well it's like that so it's like that it's James Gunn dangerous. thing where they like fired him for making pedophile jokes or whatever. You know? What, like thirty years back. That was just that was just mean. I, like, I, I, like I honestly think that's really bad that you whole saying that someone is bad because they did this thing like 50 years ago. We are forgetting that like in the 1960s, right? We did, there was still mass segregation in America. <laughs> How are we holding the general public, like 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 okay, so like take the lower class white general public yeah. who are just trying to like make money and live their lives, just trying not to get involved in politics because as most people do in general, they just don't want to get involved. If today you were held accountable for an action that you didn't take on the government 30 years ago, that would be insane. You, you can, it's, it's very dangerous to, to, to like, have it, especially when they ignore the context. Yeah. In the 50s, like, like beating women was like socially acceptable. You know, but now it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's unacceptable. Yeah. But we have, you know, can't ignore the fact that the society has changed so much and so quickly holding people accountable for things that everyone considered normal back then yeah not i think is is day i'm not saying well because like okay. when um when sean connery it's died dead. wait is it sean connor or sean connery sean Con- yeah is, is this the whenever my wife got out of line i used to give her a slap yeah <laughs> like people like it was like it was like literally like the day after. The, it's like the day the guy died, like the day after. Everyone's like, "Oh yeah, why do we love him? He was like a fucking sexist, woman abusing piece of shit." Fifties. Yeah. Everyone was. Exactly. Everyone. Every. Fucking was. Every. You know, people and then and then people aren't being so people aren't being held accountable for stuff they've done today. Yeah. Like, your mask, right? Who is who is using child slaves in the Congo? Who's causing genocide? Yeah. Who's underpaying his workers? You have literally every single politician, every single president, yeah, Obama included, is is guilty of horrific war crimes in the Middle East. But no, we well, we have to attack the actor who said like like some sort of like mild slur fifty years ago. Yeah, that's insane. We have bigger issues at hand. Yeah, exactly. way more important issues that we're just ignoring. Because yeah. it's easier to dark to target these people because yeah. it was so long ago. Well, again, it's that mentality. I think people just enjoy the idea of bringing the powerful down. You know? Yeah, 
No, but they're not. That's the thing. They it, 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 they trick themselves. Well, they, the, they I, I, I did the say, down, but they're actually not. I did say the idea of not. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. You know, because they are. Because like, oh, you know, we'll go after this actor who was famous once. That's pretty cool. Look how powerful yeah. we are. Meanwhile, the people who actually have power are bombing innocent civilians every day, and we're just yeah, okay, well that's cool because you know this guy's in prison now. Yeah. This guy died, but at least my Twitter people aren't on his side anymore. Yeah. This is insane. Yeah. What about the other issues? Pretty much, yeah. That's also what I find though. A lot of people in like the Western world don't don't bother to look at issues which don't concern them anymore. I mean, oh, exactly. And, and they pass up issues that do concern them. They, they pass up issues that that they think concern them, like like issues about like I say like one thing twenty years ago. Like, that's the biggest thing in their life. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. Well, like you said... I, I, this morning, I opened... I, I wanted to put some, like, cream cheese on my, on my like, on my cracker. <laughs> and it was, like, mold on to close the lid. I mean, that was, like, the worst thing. It might... That happened, you know, I couldn't imagine feeding the, the rage I do on a daily basis towards an actor who said something bad 20 years ago. I would be so tired. I feel so much rage already. So much anger towards the status quo, and now I'm supposed to feel it towards these people who did stuff and died. What? It's insane. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have a heart attack on a daily basis, and then it killed me, and then I get another one of these people would be attacked just because they said once accidentally. Yeah. It's a death. It's, it's like someone, I can't remember who, but someone said, like, in a video, you can't even die right nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, there's no way to do anything right anymore. You can't die right. You can't eat right. Like, there's always going to be someone's always going to have a problem with it. You know? Yeah, that's because I think people quite like it. It makes them, it makes them feel like important. And that's something social media's brought. I'm, I'm not trying to like target anyone, by the way. Yeah, like, yeah, be, yeah, be yeah. Mean to I think I think they're not to blame. I think this the, again, like the system that we're in is to blame, not them personally. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's other factors to it. Blame but, um, blame the system, not the systemers, as I, I say. I'm not and I'm not saying that the people of the past were right in doing what they were doing. No. So it's not what I'm saying, because again, I don't want to get misquoted yeah. as happens every film lesson. <laughs> That's part of, why to I be would, fair, why, it's that, why I will never talk about Woody Allen. I mean, that's not a case I'm going to go into. <laughs> I was going to ask you about I'm him. But... Yeah, I'm not going to do it. Well, you actually, no, no. Mind, can know? I ask you something that's not about him as a person? Yeah. Um. So, all right, I guess we'll call this another topic, the Woody Allen section. Um. We'll talk about God. his films. Um... Wait, wait, wait. Before we get on to Woody Allen, yeah. am I the only person who doesn't know a thing about Woody Allen? I don't even know who he is. Oh, my God. Okay. I would pin you up on everything, but I don't want to get shut down. I, I want to give, <laughs> I want to give you, I want to give Holly, I want to give you a brief description of him, and you'll instantly... Okay. Can I give a brief description? All right, go ahead. Because I don't trust your description still. I was, can I that. say what my description was going to be, and you verify it or do it? Go on. Okay. Um, small, white-haired, glasses-wearing, funny Jewish man who makes good movies. Yeah, but he's more than that. He also led um, a film revolution. He yeah. was one of the first directors who he was writing, directed, and acting, who who is, whose female characters were were viewed as, as equally as men, as yeah. funny as the men. You know, yeah. like Diane Keaton. She, I, she, I know she's not sexy in the way that he isn't. A, a They're lot... just as you they, a lot of people, myself included, do often joke about what a creepy little weirdo he is. But I will say, when you actually sit down and watch his movies, like the point of them is like, yeah, this guy is kind of pathetic, you know, like he does stupid things, and there are these women around him who, you know, while he is like constantly moving to them, they do kind of recognize those negative qualities. Like particularly in deconstructing Harry, like basically every wo every woman in that film hates him in some way because all he does is ruin their uh, fucking lives. People always make the mistake of saying that he married his own daughter, but he didn't. He married his ex stepdaughter. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's never. It's, never, it's his what? His ex wife's ex stepdaughter was who married. Oh, okay. Um, that makes sense. That. They, they made quite. That they, that. they made quite a funny joke about it on Family Guy, where he made a comment about letting judy's retainer fall out of his pocket or something <laughs> it's really fucked yeah. up but it's kind of funny but yeah that's who woody allen is um no opinions on if he's innocent or guilty i don't know no one can really know 
but the guy made some good movies and um i was the main the main reason i bring this up peter is because i own mighty aphrodite on dvd oh yes and i wanted to know if it's worth watching or not you know what mighty aphrodite you should watch it but it wasn't my favorite by him Uh i really i'll tell you what i really really loved i loved um love and death Oh, everyone loves that one. I really liked um, everything you wanted to know about sex, but were too afraid to ask. I thought that was hilarious. Mm-hmm. Um, Annie Hall is brilliant. Tika Shrugging Harry is brilliant. Well, I'm, I'm going to watch and all of them. And Murder Mystery is good. I, I am going to watch all of them, but Mighty yeah. Aphrodite is the only one that I actually own. Like, I have it on DVD. Oh, fair so, enough. So, like, is it, is it worth popping in anytime soon, or can I, like... You might... It's not it? long, so you might as well try it out and see what okay. you think. Is it better, or, is it better than Deconstructing Harry? It's not okay, because um, okay. uh, funny story. The ones I mentioned, I, think are the uh, deconstructing Harry. I, I gave Harry. um I gave Peter deconstructing Harry on VHS as a Christmas present. Um, have you had a chance to utilize it yet? Um, because we haven't been to Italy yet. Oh yeah, of course. Um, did you so keep cool. did you keep the case I gave it to you in, or did you find a new? Good. I kept it all in the case because I don't have another VHS case. <laughs> it's very uncomfortable whenever I go and open it. I'm not just still... just for context. Just days, for so. just for context, the original deconstructing Harry case was missing, and the only oh. one I had was a. Um, it was for a VHS that used to belong to my sister when she was like seven. Um, of like I can't remember what is it again. It's like a ballerina, like it's a six-year-old ballerina guide. Yeah. <laughs> So deconstruct, and I thought that was funny because you know it's Woody Allen. <laughs> it was one of the most scary things of opening that box. Because well, you know, well, because um, Alex thought I'd actually given you like child porn yeah. or something. So did I. I was so scared. I thought, okay, Jesus Christ, what do I do in this That's situation? That's part of the magic. You have to, yeah. you have to admit that's it's terrifying. I, I couldn't, I couldn't have gotten you anything better for Christmas. Admit it. It's just the deconstructing how I felt. <laughs> 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 I know, but yeah. like, I mean, yeah. the way the way I delivered it, there's no better way I could uh, have it, done it. It was done very well, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm all about the execution. Holly, did I get you a Christmas present? I can't even remember. Uh, no. Oh, um, that's a little bit still. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. I didn't get you anything. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fuck you. Fuck both of you. I didn't get anything from you. In my defense, I still... I, you know, that, that, it, it was complete, like, I didn't know, I didn't know that, was, that a gift was coming. Because I don't normally do gifts. That's the magic of Christmas. No, you, you have to prearrange that. I spent so much money on Nolan and Lara because we planned that we were all going to do, like, a uh, gift lame. exchanging thing. Surprises. You have to pre-plan it. It's all about surprises. Actually, you know, to be fair, the, the day before Christmas, I just opened most of my presents. <laughs> my life has gone on, I... Like, well, because I I don't. I'm less, less interested in gifts in the, general. The funny thing is, is I don't really care about Christmas that much. But like, mm-hmm. my mum was like, "Well, it's Christmas. I have to get you something." I was like, "No, you don't." And she was that's, just like, "Yes, I that's, do." That's nice. That's sweet. I know, but like, she didn't have to. Like, I'm. The act of gift giving, I think, is a nice thing. I am grateful, but the point I'm making is that I'm a spiteful prick, and she shouldn't get me anything. <laughs> that's the point I'm trying to make, you know. A poor mother. I'm still grateful. Oh, yeah. I was really grateful. She got me everything I asked for. So you know, shout there out, sh- shout out to mum. <laughs> also, yes, Holly, I did get you a Christmas present. It was that story I wrote about you. That was before yeah. Christmas. Yeah, it was a pre-Christmas present. Oh well, and then I get one of those as well. So I, do really I got one of those as well. Yeah, but that was for a special reason. I, I got did, one as well. I did one. For, <laughs> I did one for each of the film studies class members. Oh. Yeah. She's only got her own special, I understand. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Sorry, Peter, but that's how it works. That's how I'm memorizing. Okay. Come cool. to terms with that stuff. Fair enough. Do we have any. Do <laughs> we have... I've overcome the trauma. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> Been years of therapy. B- before we move on. I, I... feel great shame. Before we move on, I do have one more sort of, I guess, topic I want to talk about. What is it? What is it going to be like going back to school? Is my question. Um, I'm quite happy to kind of go back. 
yeah. for some reason. I just kind of want to at this point. I mean, it's going to be the last couple of months ever that we'll have in, like, school yeah, education. Yeah. So, yeah. so I'm kind of happy to go back. I kind of want to see those dresses you were talking about, actually. Oh, I'm not sure if I can wear those to school. Why not? <laughs> What's wrong with them? There's just a time and a place for certain things. <laughs> what, are they like? Are they, like, stripper dresses no oh okay well i don't see what the problem is i'm gonna wear my sixth doctor coat peter's gonna wear the same bomber jacket he always wears you should wear one of your dresses but i've got a bomber jacket do i uh, the, not bomber jacket like the olive jacket that you wear all the time olive is it olive black it's been so long i've forgotten the black one the, that, the, the really thin like the jacket like that you black. always wear with like the military badge on it or whatever I don't need to buy a jacket. I, I, still, I haven't worn that you jacket. You know what I'm years. talking about, Peter. <laughs> the that, jacket that, that you... I haven't worn that for ages. Have you not? I, you wore it before lockdown. You, you wore it before lockdown I, started again. Okay. Dude, I, I had a really scruffy one that was black and was that similar style. It didn't have any badges or anything. It was a little bit too big for me as well. Oh, uh, okay. That one. I, was, I really liked that one. It was very comfy you're just pissing me off now um but yeah but like okay let me oh, refresh your, yes. let me refresh your memory the jacket you wore when i took pictures of you for our media studies coursework yeah that jacket. yeah i haven't worn that one in ages oh okay all right so we were talking about the same thing never mind um no we weren't Try a different one so like oh i see mean yeah no we were at that point yeah, yeah yeah so like what 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 are we gonna do like we're gonna go to school Vision. do some lessons do yes, we still have tests do we yeah, we still have essays to write. We still have work to do, like, which where GCSEs would be. Yeah, but isn't isn't the idea so far that, like, each exam board will send in questions and then the teachers can pick which ones we're going to do? Yeah, but I, I, I've got no faith that they're actually going to do that. Well, if they do, I have a lot of confidence because, you know... I feel like year 13 has been, like... Or I guess year 12 has been the first year where, like, I actually have a good relationship with all of my teachers you know mm. like because okay so say so, say, so what say, about well, our film ones oh film you mean film teacher well, i've got a good relationship with all our films film, you teachers, mean fi- you i mean, know that you have a sort of relationship with one of them. well i i i have like a decent relationship with him like it's not terrible mm. like yeah he's a bit patronizing and everything but like He's not the worst teacher I've ever can we, had. Can we make sure that no teacher listens to this because I feel bad? Because I, I do I really like him as a teacher. I, I don't, well, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, I still get on with the guy. Like, he's not the worst mm-hmm. teacher I've ever had. That award goes to... Class, though, I that, that award goes to my fucking physics teacher from year 10. Like, that was unbearable. But, like, what Who I'm saying... What I'm saying is... What I'm saying... What I'm saying is that I trust my teachers. You know? Fair enough. I trust our philosophy teachers and I trust... Um, our film studies teachers. I trust. I trust that they have our best interests. Do you feel the same way, guys? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. I think all of my teachers. I mean, some of my teachers don't really know who I am, but my philosophy teachers, yeah. Yeah, because like we're actually at an age, and we're in a year. Like we're being taught by like the top tier teachers who teach A levels. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I'm... I just don't want to have to stay until July. Oh yeah, God, fuck that. That's when my birthday it's gonna is. Actually. Anyway, that's gonna happen anyway. <laughs> I don't want it to be my birthday when I'm at school. I'm really quite glad with how lockdown has gone for me. Yeah, me too. Because Nolan and Laura both turn eighteen in January. That means they can, you know, do what they want. But I'm not 18 until April. But lockdown has really done me a favour in terms of they can't go out anywhere, make any fun memories without me. They uh, can't do that. Because uh, by the yeah. time things open up, nice. I'll be 18. Nice. So this has all gone really well for me. You lucky bastard. Well found. I, April's a sad time for me because it's the anniversary of Elizabeth Sladen's death. Elizabeth Sladen. Oh, she's the one who played um... Sarah Jane. Yeah, yeah okay. this this April she would have died ten years ago. Oh, that was cruel to remind me. Wait, yeah. Sarah Jane from CBBC. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah Jane's Adventures. Yeah, she That's died. Ended, she so died quickly. ten years ago. What? Yeah. Unexpectedly, I think. Yeah, it was well because I don't think she told many people that she was ill, so it just kind of happened. Uh, 
Uh, it was a very, it was very much a Chadwick Boseman case, you know. I don't think she wanted to upset yeah. it. She didn't want to upset anyone, so. Yeah. And also didn't want it to affect her career while she was alive. Yeah. So I think I, I think it was probably quite similar to Chadwick Boseman's case as well. He just didn't want it to get in the way. Yeah. Of, of like his work and what he did loved. Did you guys it, see Ma? Did you guys see Ma Rainey's Black Bottom? It was that good. It was so fucking good. I love it. Really? It's like well, because like it has that problem where it is based on like a play. You know, where like yeah. it, it won't translate like one hundred percent to film, but I think for what it is, it's pretty pheno Works. phenomenal. Yeah. yeah, like it's amazing. Ten out of ten, I would say actually. Ten out of ten. Well, that's that's that's, that's more based on my overall enjoyment. You know, like there were probably issues. There were probably issues with it that I just didn't notice because I was having too much fun watching it. You know. Yeah, that's fair. So yeah, on the tenth anniversary, I'm going to be rewatching the uh, school reunion episode of Doctor Who. That's cool. Which was that one? The oh, one Doctor, with the bats. Which was that one? You know, the bat aliens. Bats. Yeah, he got reunited with Sarah Jane and K9. You know, David Tennant. Uh, the, no, that's not bats. Is that, is that, isn't that the wedding episode? No, that's the runaway bride. Yeah. No, the school yeah. school reunion. You know, where like there's bat school teacher things. I don't remember that at all. Well, I'm going to be watching it uh, when it gets to the day. So, you know, remembering Sarah Jane. I, I actually... Who, who's accomplice was she? Was she the accomplice of... Um... David Tennant. Uh, yeah. yeah. I came up with my own idea for a storyline, which kind of, like, gives her, like, an on-screen conclusion, you know? Yeah, I agree. Could Did I... you ever write it out? Can I share it? Hey, it's not too long, Esther. No. <laughs> Okay, so yeah. my idea for the storyline goes that it's revealed that just before Sarah Jane died, the Doctor, like, mm. took her into the TARDIS, right? Yeah. And then he put her in, like, a sort of pocketed universe where she basically just lives forever and is always travelling with can't the Doctor. You can't bring her back to life, Esther. You can't do that. No, no, it's not bringing her back to life. It's... Can I finish? Can I finish, please? <laughs> yeah thank you yeah. so it's revealed that just before she died the doctor took her and put her in like a pocketed universe where she never dies and she's always traveling with the doctor right and then the doctor sure yeah and then the doctor like his new companion like finds out what he's done and it's like it's what the moral of the story is that it's fucked up to like prevent the inevitable because because she's been alive in this fantasy world for so long she's basically become a shell of like a human being and the moral of the story is the doctor just kind of has to let her go and let her die. So dark. Yeah. And at the same time, they actually go back in time and they meet a younger Sarah Jane Smith who also finds out what the doctor's done to her and her future. And it's not happy with it. Not happy about it. And then after they've had their little adventure, which I won't go into too much detail, they've had a little adventure that involves Cybermen and a sweet shop and turning students into Cybermen. Um, That's perfect. The Doctor lets go of Sarah Jane. He lets her die. The um, the old, like the younger Sarah Jane, decides to forgive the Doctor, you know, because she knows that he meant well, I guess. Um, and then the last thing he says to her is, goodbye, my Sarah Jane, basically. That's the conclusion. So if I ever get a chance, if I ever get a chance to write for the show, that's the script I'm submitting. What that project? Sorry? I said I will support that project. Oh, really? Yeah. Thanks, man. Tell you what I think they should do. What? Right? Replace the signal? I know now they've done that new um, Trey Speaker Returns thing. Yeah. Um, here's what I... Did, did you guys ever watch the show? Or yeah. Is that just me? Yeah, I watched Trey Speaker. Okay. Um, I was more of a Disney child, to be honest. Oh, piss You watch Disney. Like, you're one of the lucky ones. We never get this. <laughs> The sweet like, we didn't get Disney Cody. Cody. like we had like BBC and that was it. I had I had, we all, know, we, I we had all the I had all the channels, man. Yeah, I don't even think we got Nickelodeon. <laughs> <laughs> but to be honest, I don't think I missed out on anything. CBBC had the best. CBBC had the best shows anyway. Yeah. Because they like the characters weren't like stupid or morally corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. That's, they that's were. True. They were interesting. That's I would, true. I would. I can't imagine my life having watched like. All those shows with like the cockroaches and things running around doing stuff. Oggy and the cockroaches. Yeah. Exactly. That show was fucking awesome. I love that show. Exactly. There we go. Exhibit A. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you. Also, okay. Have you heard this thing? Honestly, and I heard it like in different type of rage. 
can 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 uh, like over me, which I don't normally feel. I was reading an article, mm-hmm. and it said that Steven Spielberg, who has now been fired from the project, just to be clear, right. because he's lost the plot, um, said it's time we make Indiana Jones a woman. We should just call her Indiana Jones. That's the most retarded thing I've ever heard in my life. Rage. Pure rage came across me. I thought I was going to throw my phone across the room and hit a window. Honestly. <laughs> I have no idea the anger I felt because I thought I've had, I've had just start writing good films with lead women. Just do that. Why is that so difficult? We just have like a good film where, the, where there's the lead woman and, and like it's just a new film. I think you have to like make this desperate attempt to try and revitalize everything. What did you it's say it was epic. again? Indiana Joe? Indiana Joan. J-O-A-N. See, that sounds like a parody title. That doesn't sound real. Exactly. Also, is he unaware that it's the last name? Right? How does that do anything? I'm like, <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I know, we'll make a woman, we'll make, we'll change the entire last name to a last name that sounds feminine. What is it called? <laughs> just make good films and lead women. It's not that difficult. Like, just, oh. just put the amount of effort you put in to trying to rip off all these great films with lead women and just make good lead women. He's ripping off his own movie. <laughs> Why? I don't, no, nothing. It just doesn't make sense to me. Why they would just like? I think it's insulting. To say, okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make look. We're gonna make Ghostbusters, but we're just gonna have lead women. No, just make a new film. Just write a script with a, which is good script with good characters, or a women as well. I, why is that so difficult? It's ridiculous. It's... They should be ashamed. My <laughs> anyone, who, anyone who watches those films and like thinks, oh, this is so progressive. I've never, it. I've no, never it's not. watched. It's the opposite of progressive. I never watched. They're this. refusing. Honestly, it, it, it's it's like. They tricked you, if you know you've been fooled by, the, <laughs> by their by their little by their, by their plot to to kind of suck you in and make you watch this film and make you think, oh, this is so cool. It's all women. It that doesn't make that doesn't make it progressive. It doesn't make it like a good thing. I haven't fixed anything. You've made the problem worse. Yeah, I don't know. I never, oh, I never, know. I never watched the Ghostbusters reboot just because it looked like dreadful. Sh- it all just... of those type of things. Ocean's Eight. What are they doing there? <laughs> It already exists. Ocean's Eleven. It's been done. <laughs> Do something else. Like how many? Hey, that's the thing, right? How many new films today are actually coming out that are genuinely new ideas that are good? Um, I mean, genuinely new ideas. They're, they're not rip-offs. They're not spin-offs. They're not prequels. They're not sequels. They're not. They're not the same film with an all-woman cast. They're not the same film with an all-man cast. And they're not TV shows. The Sleepover was quite unique. <laughs> I haven't even heard of it. Haven't oh my god! It. <laughs> can I just talk about Do the I mean... sleep? Can I just talk about the sleepover briefly? Hang on. I, I mentioned it on my 2020 list video. It's like single-handedly, like the most like insulting, just awful, like unbelievable slap in the face, like piece of shit. I think I've ever seen. <laughs> But it's so funny for all those reasons, and at least I can sit there and say when comparing it to something like the Ghostbusters reboot or Indiana Joan or whatever the fuck it's called, it's it's a semi-original idea like, instead of just doing something else again. Uh, but that's the thing, like they're, they're like okay, did you guys? They are like four films that come out every year, which are like Oscar nominated. Yeah. Which aren't, which are like the original ideas, which which are also like a mainly like women led cast. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and I'll tell you, you know why that is. That's because because no one's making them, because none of the films that have an all women cast are good. Not because the blame isn't with the fact that it's an all women cast. The blame is with the producers and the writers who are so tired and bored and money grabbing and useless that they decide that they're just going to take a script that already exists and just change the names. What like Gemini That's Man? Not film, like. Or or like or like Ghostbusters. They literally just like it's the same film. Yeah. Like, what you all you've done there is create a dreadful spin off. Make a good film. Yeah. We watched that film Hillbilly Elegy, which is about which is like the, the three generations of women in this family in the Midwest in America. And it was brilliant. Mm-hmm. It was just great. Ben yeah. Close, Amy Adams and another one. And it was it was good. It was like a, it was like oh you know this one was good you know she's going close to be nominated. So it's like this is a good film. It's a, you know it's original women cast. It's not a spin off. It's like now you put now see what happens when you put effort into a script and also a progressive. Very difficult. Just like think. Yeah. 
What do you rant over? What do you think, Holly? <laughs> Um, I I think Peter actually makes an interesting point. I never heard of anyone make that point before, but it's quite interesting. You've never heard um, that before? Not not of the whole thing of just remaking it with women, and it doesn't make it any more progressive. I, I because can't, they're just I can't tell you how many times like I've I've <laughs> I've both said that to myself and heard other people say it. <laughs> oh, I've this never really... heard it. But also, what I don't like is okay. I like Star Wars. Great. I I mean I don't like George Lucas too much, but uh, I like Star Wars. Um, but um, I was watching it last night. I was watching the sequels, mm. and if you compare it to the originals, they're just spitting out the same plot over yeah. and over again. And the thing, and it's the thing so about boring. And the thing about the Force Awakens is everyone, myself included, fucking loved it when it came out. But like. I'm now afraid to rewatch it because I recently watched the original trilogy like a few months ago and it's like I I I don't really have like a place in my heart for those sequel films, you know? Like No, I I don't know. I I love the prequels, love the originals of course. You love the prequels? But... You've the fucking, I, the fucking prequels, the prequels have Hayden Christensen and fucking, like, I, I just called George Lucas a money grubber, right? And no, I, I, I find it, I find I it. I love Hayden Christensen. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I find it ironic that George Lucas has, like, a fucking Jewish stereotype who's, like, depicted as, like, a money grubbing fucking big nose slave owner with a funny hat right and jedi mind tricks don't work on me only money i'm like mate you're the fucking money grubber that fucking sold this for like billions of dollars to a fucking soulless corporation that just pumps out garbage every year and fucking i still isn't condoning anti-semitism sorry i thought i should put out there no 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 one is condoning and it's just like no, no, I'm, I'm saying, well. I'm saying, I find, I find it ironic that George Lucas puts like a money grubbing Jewish stereotype in the film, as if to be like anti-Semitic, um, when he a, him, when he himself is a money that. is a money grubber who like, fucking re-released old movies, promising they'd be better, and selling them for loads of money when they were just complete shit. Well, here's the thing. I completely blame... The prequels got a lot of hate when they came out. They still I, they still deserve but it. But the thing is, everyone blamed the actors. But I don't blame the actors. I blame oh, George I, I Lucas. Don't, I don't blame I think, the actors. Like, but that's the thing. A lot of the actors got a lot of hate from them, especially Hayden, who then came out of being an actor at all because of all the backlash he got from it. I, I, but I really, if you, if you look at his other movies, he's a really, really good actor. But the way that he was directed by George Lucas and the lines that he was given just made him be come across so awfully. Yeah, I, I don't hate Hayden Christensen. I want to make that clear. I think he's a great guy. I've seen the behind the scenes stuff. He's really funny and he seems great. But like just the the way that that character was portrayed just really like I watched them not that long ago. No, but like, the thing is, I watched I them like, like last year. They're so boring. They're like the most fucking boring films I've ever seen in my entire life. Like two and a half hour long space operas where nothing happens <laughs> i did a whole episode think... of the podcast about them nothing happens throughout any of them they're so boring the thing is personally unpopular opinion it may be but i think hayden christensen actually did a good job in terms of portraying the conflicting emotions within anakin of being a jedi who weren't really meant to sucked, express man. emotions but considering his past and then with Palpatine, all of that going on, and blah blah blah. I think, given the shitty directions he was given, I think he did a good job with portraying the emotions yeah. of him to be also like being like this like angsty like teenage factor as well. Even though I think he was like twenty something, Anakin was meant to be in the prequels, I... but whatever. But I think I think he. I think he played the character quite well, given the circumstances. I couldn't see anyone else playing Anakin in the way that Hayden Christensen did. Well, yeah, that's because of how uniquely terrible it is. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I like the idea of it. I like the idea of the character. I'm just not that keen on the execution is all. No, but... anything George Lucas did, I don't approve of. No. 
I think George Lucas, Lu- Lucas is doing Spielberg need to need, need to retire. Yeah, it's over. <laughs> they glory, right? So they yeah. did like and this, okay, this Spielberg is behind some of the films ever. This is but coming from a guy behind. who was defending him not that long ago as well. I, I, I and I still do defend him. I think he's an amazing director, and I think he's done genuinely some of the greatest films ever. But he and needs I, to retire. I, I, I will, I will stand by that, Jaws. Um, shit yeah. list in Dana Jones one to three. I, um, I agree with you, but he does need to retire. BT. He needs to but retire. It, it, it's over. Like the yeah. glory, and they're trying to relive these glory days in this desperate attempt to do everything well and shove ideologies down our throats. Right. But it's just like give in. It's your time is up, and just you guys need to pass that. And the first thing, right? When I say to like, retire, I don't mean have someone else do do your films. Just yeah. stop making these films. Yeah. Don't make another Jurassic Park film. What, don't you... make another Dana Jones film. Just stop. <laughs> you know what you were saying about how these women-led films are effectively being anti-progressive when they're supposed to be yeah, progressive. I don't think they're progressive, yeah. Um, you know Ready Player One, right? Have you have you seen it? I like that very much, to be honest. <laughs> well, what bothers me about that is it tries to be progressive by having like that female character who's like, I'm so ugly in the real world, you wouldn't like me, but then it's just a really hot like redhead with a birthmark on her face. It's another thing. How is it that that's still allowed? How is the idea of, of like, she takes off her glasses and now she's stunning? Like, get not They what? did it in Wonder Woman as well. How is that, like, okay? I, just, I, I don't understand. Not how so, I, I get how that's still happening. How, how is anyone marking that as, like, a good idea? I don't no know. one has that. Who in the real world goes... She's so ugly. Oh my god, she doesn't have glasses on. She's stunning. No one has that. <laughs> That's not a real thing. Well, to be fair, it's, 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 it's been going on for years. Like, even the fucking Breakfast Club did it. And that's why the ending to that movie is awful. I think the Breakfast Club, you know, fine. It's like, did it in the 80s, you know. I, it, still bother, now, it still bothers me. Like, I, don't know. I don't know. That's why I like when, um, in, in Carry the Chance of Meatballs, it does the opposite. Oh yeah, she's she more attractive with her glasses on. She's trying to be re- she's trying to be attractive and like look cool without her glasses, and then he's like, just put them on. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, and then she does, and it's like she looks fine. Yeah, exactly. And that's great. That's yeah. the message we need to be sending. Exactly. That's why. Don't have people. That's they're why. They're self conscious about pieces of clothing and like glasses because some character in a film happens to take them off, and suddenly everyone thinks they're attractive. That's not mm. nowhere in the real world or in any fantasy world, unless your glasses are like that. Mega Minds watch is that a real thing? You say all of this, um, but Cloudy of a Chance um, of Meatballs was made by the same people that gave us the Emoji Movie. <laughs> no, I know. Actually, that's not no. But I, I blame all that on the Minions Movie. <laughs> the enough. entire collapse of, of of animated cinema on the Minions Movie. <laughs> so you know, I, I take. I I take it you won't be watching Minions: The Rise of Gru then. And they should get lost. Have, have they lost their minds? We have allowed because the, all these even like they've lost the plot now. Mm-hmm. Animation was the first. We we didn't realize the animation because because we're too old to realize, and and it's mainly a young audience. I know yeah. adults still watch it, but you know it's not the same. So we kind of ignored that, and, and good animation films have died. And cinema is dying as well. That's all yeah. that. It's all dying. It's all. It's all going. Hey, you finally got to say what you wanted to say. Well done. We'll see. Yeah, but isn't that because of all the big streaming services having the money to do things? Was like oh, that, that's the thing. That's a part. So take of it, Mar- yeah. Take Mar- no, 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 I disagree. Take Martin Scorsese. Martin Scorsese, who re- who is you know known to be like you know like the top ten great directors of all time. Yeah, I think we can all. But that's that's pretty not much agreed on leading a revolution in cinema um his new film the irishman he had the script he had the cast he had the story he had everything no one would make it after the netflix oh, yeah. would actually yeah i wouldn't say streaming is the death of cinema um, no the death of cinema is everything is when you, you just ha- said is, basically is everything else Everything else is, is is the fact that we've got to a point where films are only being made for money. Yeah. Easy Rider, Taxi Driver, they're not being... They, obviously, money was <laughs> an incentive, but that yeah. wasn't what led the project. What yeah. led the project was passion. Just like Shrek. I mean, films aren't... Sorry, so <laughs> films aren't being led by passion anymore. Doesn't... Yeah. Do, rise... You know, you, you, you know the Planet of the Apes? The, 
the, the three films. They yeah. were excellent. Yeah. I, I loved them. Sure. Fun fact about those films, the production company didn't order those films. Oh, really? A couple, like 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 this, this, this guy and this girl wrote the script for all three and approached the production company. They said, we want to make these films. And they said, yeah, fine. Nice. No one, they weren't approached. Production company didn't do the approaching. Nice. And that said, it wasn't made directly for cash. The, 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 the creative minds behind it was pure desire to bring back a great series. Yeah. Well, it worked. Well, actually, Peter, speaking of streaming and Death of Cinema, what do you think of um this whole Christopher Nolan drama? I don't know, Christopher Nolan, anyway. I don't care. <laughs> I can't stand it. I can't. I guess he, he just, he's leaving because they want to do the HBO Max thing. Maybe, yes, maybe. Fair enough. I I'm don't not like I'm HBO not anyway. I'm not in I'm not entirely sure. Maybe they said that they would release it in the cinemas first for a couple weeks and then switch to HBO Max and he still didn't like that. I don't know. I'm not entirely up to date. So uh, either way, I'm not sure, but like if they're going to release them in the cinemas first and then put to HBO Max, I don't see why there should be a problem with that. Um, that's fine. I want no issue with that. Yeah. Um definitely not worth leaving a company over but if they do if they were yeah exactly but if they were like offering to release it at the same time then you know i guess i can understand the issue with that even i even if i don't have it personally but whatever holly's Holly's on mute are you okay holly yeah sorry i was just sorting out my cat okay how is little kitty cat she's good she's uh she's um She's good. Nice. <laughs> Not much else to say. She's great. She's sleeping, but um, yeah, she's she's good. We got her catnip. She loves that. You know, it's basically heroin for cats, right? Yeah, I know, but she loves it. You are so feeding it makes her happy, a drug addiction, Holly. Yeah, I know. The thing is, I keep watching her because she keeps waking up and doing this weird thing with her face recently. <laughs> but um, I just think she's a weird cat, to be honest. But it's her birthday next month. One years old on the twenty fifth of March. Nice. Happy birthday for the twenty. Yeah, happy birthday <laughs> for the cat. We'll we'll all do something nice in the group chat for the cat. Probably. <laughs> I saw. Did anyone send any questions? Sorry. Just saw your, did anyone send any questions? I just saw your story. Oh right, yeah, that's a good place to um, segue. I guess. Thank you for bringing that up. So right. this is this is the part of the podcast where I bring up some questions. Um, we choose to skip. Sorry? I don't, I don't trust society. You what, sorry? We choose to skip. Can we choose to skip, skip certain questions? Or just answer it amusingly? I, I don't know. I guess. Maybe. Of All course. Right. Well, think. actually, the first question is for you, Peter. Oh. How um, do I know it's me? Because it's on my... It's on the comments of that video that we made for film for media studies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah All right. So this is from LSD Nitty. Hello, Estelle. Just wanted to say I like your videos a fair amount and I enjoyed this little interview you did with your friend Peter in particular. He comes across as a charming fellow and a good friend. Also wanted to ask, is Peter a homosexual? Since the answer is clearly yes, what kind of men is he into? Cheers, (laughs) XOXO. The answer is no. Um, um, I've gotten used to those questions in the past. That was literally something that someone just <laughs> left like two days ago, and I have no idea why. Oh, um, no surprises there. This guy's been um, this guy's been subscribed to me for like three months. <laughs> I used to have those questions for months, years on end. So, <laughs> it's just because people are, are threatened by the fact that I'm well spoken. I think what it is. I think there's other reasons, Peter, but. We don't have to get into them if you don't want to. Well spoken, I, I'm well spoken, I smile a lot and people are afraid of... That doesn't make you gay. Happy. Exactly, but, but, but people, people are intimidated. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next question then. It's definitely, it's definitely my mannerism of speech. Fair enough. Definitely doesn't help. Alright. Next question then. This is from Steffi Yala. Um, who is your celebrity crush? That's a good question. Oh. Go ahead. Um, okay, right. So we've got Matthew Gray Goober, mm-hmm. of course. Yeah. Chris Evans, yeah. Sebastian Stan, Hayden Christensen, Orby Plaza. Those are the five off the top of my head. Nice. Uh, what about you, Peter? Uh, now, I know... I, I, the names always get me mixed up. Mm-hmm. Margot Robbie. 
because yeah. you know at this point it would be insane to not mention Margot Robbie yeah um uh, I had a conversation with people like three days ago about this um oh bloody hell I'm just trying to go through. Oh, a Laura Dern. I don't know why. Really? I was like Laura Dern. Laura yeah, Dern. I just. I think just because she seems nice. Yeah, that's fair enough. I she, would, she wouldn't yell at me. And that's the rare. So I don't know. I I, I, I find her to be um, quite motherly. You know. Yeah, but you know, she seems she seems friendly. I guess. Karen Allen, always Karen Allen. <laughs> fair enough. Um, I think I I need to double check my names here. You said you Deep quite fancied the Spice that. Girls, I recall. No, uh, I'm never going with the Spice Girls. I like the classy, kind of like the fur look. What's the who? I'm trying to think of someone who wears that really well. Chris Kelly. Oh, okay, that makes sense, I guess. Um, and someone more modern again. I think who are modern? I have to look it up now. You want to have sex with a lot of people, Peter. Jesus. Who <laughs> should name four? Who <laughs> named five? I'll have a go at her. Okay. Make a shut down. <laughs> Also, I, I forgot Mark Hamill. Oh, Present right. day Mark Hamill as well. <laughs> well, I'm with you there. What, post car crash, big fan. Mark Hamill. <laughs> well, I'm with you there, Holly. Young Diane Keaton, because I think she's aged really well. Yeah, um, actually, that's a good answer. Slash and Duff McKagan, of course. Mm, Ian Moore. Yeah. Very fast if that's, she wasn't a lesbian. That's, complete, that's completely fair. Um... Me, um, uh, Kidman. Okay, can I have a chance to answer now? Oh, I'm just going through the list. Oh, I'm trying to remind myself. How many in fucking people? In summary, there are a lot. Yeah, it changes can we, can we, like can day we end it? Can we end it there, oh, please? That's, that's the one. Okay, okay, then we're done. Then. I have two. No, we're done, mate. I only have Sorry, two yeah, fucking yeah. answers. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, my, I don't know if this is going to be considered weird. A young Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, she's hot, right? I get it. Um, me, I would say... Um, Hayden McAdams. Oh, specifically I'm... Hayden Christensen is in life as a house when he plays Sam or Bo. Okay, you know what? I'm done with this question. I'm just moving on now. Fuck both of you. Fucking, I fucking hate both of you. Um, okay. Uh, what's your opinion on Mr. Beast? He was, of course, the famous YouTuber who is known for spending... I don't give a shit about Mr. Beast, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't know who that him. is. <laughs> um, I don't know if you're lucky or unlucky, to be honest. I couldn't say either way. Uh, that was, that question was from Seb Makes Music. Um, well... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't have much of an opinion on him. I used to watch his videos quite a lot, but I kind of grew out of them, I guess. That's my opinion on Mr. Beast. I don't know if I've ever watched any of it. Is he like the Scandinavian one? He's not, is he? Someone else? No, he's American. Oh, well, you get lost then. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, next question. What is the best cereal? Ooh, good question. Oh, that yeah. is a good question. Okay, what's the time of day? Um, I'm Ooh, that's a good point. Uh, I'm going to yeah. say um, morning, ready for breakfast. Cold milk or warm milk? Uh, cold, I don't cold like milk. Any milk. Cold milk. Okay, cold milk. Okay. I have, Honestly, I, I have... think probably crunchy nut. Really? Crunchy nut or cocoa pops? Mm. My classics around myself. I would, I would say cocoa Actually, pops. No. Yeah. That's because you don't have it with milk. You just don't know. Well, <laughs> you have, you have... yeah. I don't have milk. Yeah, I don't who have the dry fuck cereal. Has, who the fuck has dry cereal? Like, come on. I don't. I don't like dairy. So. All oh, right. Well, you can have, have it, like... but Captain what about Crunch, dairy crazy. Lucky Charms. What about oat milk? But see, the, the, that's all because you don't like milk. Yeah. So if you like milk, you'd like different cereal. What about soy milk? Well, to be honest, I don't actually have any cereal in my house. I don't generally eat it. But if okay. I was, if it's like, I don't know. But I like Captain Crunch and Lucky Charms, but I don't like milk. Okay. Mm. Fair enough, I guess. I mean, you're a strange person. There is soy milk, but, you know, whatever. Oh. Uh, Disgusting too. Just milk in general. Just the idea of milk, I don't like. Yeah, but you need it's milk. It's so nice. Yeah. Very delicious. Okay. I mean, I've I've done nearly eighteen years without it, and I've been all right. So you've never even had it. No. So how can you what? say you don't like milk? Okay. That yeah, that is bad because just so delicious. I it's really good for you. So calcium. 
It could be a teeth as well. Yeah. I just like cheese, butter, cream, all of it. Disgusting. Okay, cheese, I understand. And yogurt. But... What about yogurt? No, I don't. Cheese is one of the greatest creations of humanity. I have to like, with you cheese then. literally like, trumps every bad thing we've done as a society because at least we have cheese. <laughs> I hate cheese. To me, yogurt. Oh my god, I love yogurt. Yogurt. I'm sure in the future, I'm gonna just get class with some sort of lunatic serial killer, but I'm just coming down to that. <laughs> oh, you know, yeah, oh, yogurt. Oh, it's delicious. Mm. Oh, that that yogurt. I didn't even say it. That was from I can't read the full name. Humphrey Kibble or whatever. Thanks, thanks for the question, man. If we can do without the names, it means nothing to me. <laughs> Next, all right. Next question. Then. This is from this is from Gillian H three six six. What is the best song of all time? The Man by Nina Simone. Although it's not my favorite, I think it's the best. Okay, Holly. That's a really difficult question. I already got an answer. To be honest, Dan uh, dancing, in, dancing, video. dancing in the moonlight by um top by not top loader by King Harvest, the original from the seventies. Dancing in the moonlight, is that that one? No, that's no. It's like um, dancing in the moonlight. Everybody, I was pretty close. Oh, I, I, we 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 were intended on the same song. Well, it's the original version that was like written in the sixties. Like, I just yeah. I love that song so much. It really connects with me. I like it. I would say that's the best song. There's two answers out of three. Are we gonna get a third? Good question. Um. <laughs> Oh, it's a really hard question. Um, well, what, hmm, what did you um, have? What have you listened to recently that you really liked? Well, it changes a lot. I have like a thousand different playlists, but all right, just for the sake of it, we'll say "Ignition" by R. This Kelly. Morning, That's Holly's favorite song. This morning, I was listening listening to um, "Could Heaven Ever Be Like This." And oh, yeah. just the two of us, which everyone knows. Yes, the and two of us. Those are what I was listening to earlier. Okay, well, those are some of the best songs ever made, so I'll give you that one. Um, all right, I think we answered that. Um, this one's from The Mighty Lie. Favorite TV series? This is a Good really question. this is a really difficult one for me personally. But can I list five? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. As long as, it's not, as long as it doesn't go on fucking ever. No, best for Saul. Uh huh. Jack Horseman. It's always sunny. Wire. And. What's going in that position? Friday Night Dinner? No. New Breaking Bad, but I'm not sure. I haven't fully really decided that yet. Um, Those four, definitely. If I was going to do um, five or four, I guess, I would agree with two of those. It's Always Sunny and Bojack Horseman. Those shows are just amazing. Um, I think Rick and Morty is probably up there because like, it's just such a well-written, well-animated, well-voice acted show. Like Everything about it is basically of quality. And like there are a few duds in there, but that's to be expected Like from popular shows. There's always going to be like a dud episode um because most of it is so great there has to be like a bit of a drop because you can't be consistently amazing all the time and to me that just kind of makes the show stronger oh, the wire. yeah that kind of makes the show stronger like the first season of bojack horseman is in many ways horrendous but the rest of the show I think is pretty good well the rest of the show is so amazing like compared to it you know Mm, like, I like the first season. I, I, say about I, it's always sunny. I don't. The I don't. Like the first season is always sunny. Is brilliant. I, I don't. Be, I don't it's think. Just better when you watch it a second well, time. Rewording that, I don't think the first season of BoJack Horseman is like the worst thing ever, but mm. just it's very weak. Like it doesn't. I really... Season three was worse. Really? Wait. Yeah. What season? Only the ending. What season? Wait. No. What season they three are, they again? Are season two. What season? I don't remember. There's one season that was just boring. Uh, well, for me, that's the Fair first. Enough. Well, I just thought the first Fair season. Enough. I just thought the first season was kind of cringy. Fair enough. Fair enough. There's some cringeworthy moments, and the other two shows uh, I would put on that list. Um, I really like um, the Mighty Boosh. Um, that show was hilarious. Uh, we had to switch it off once in class because someone got offended by the satirical slant on domestic abuse with coconuts. <laughs> Oh my god, I remember that. Yeah, that was that pissed oh me off. God, to be that honest, that was really weird. I remember that. That really annoyed me. But um, yeah, and 
I pro I really love Peep Show. Like, that's up there with one of the best things I've ever seen, probably. Ah. Uh. Um, Holly, do you have an answer? Obviously, I mean Rick and Morty, great. Um. Criminal Minds, purely because I spent my whole life watching it, um, mm -hmm. and I could watch it all the time. Love it, great. Um, Matty Go Goober. Um, and right now, what I was watching the other day was Big Little Lies, which is I enjoyed, uh, but I'm pretty sure it's been cancelled. So oh. a lot of people probably didn't. <laughs> um, I just want to shout out a show I've been watching recently. Actually, it's called Life on Mars. Um, I really like it. Uh, so have you only just seen Life on Mars? Life on Mars was my first lockdown show, and it was so good. Yeah, I've I only I've, Life on Mars. don't don't spoil it for me because I've only finished the first Obviously. season. Don't watch, don't watch the spin-off series though. Ashes to Ashes. Yeah, don't watch it. Well, oh, I've heard I've heard some cool. I've heard some people say it's better, and other people say it's worse. So I promised you, but it will ruin in all of the, all of the, the of life on Mars if you watch Ashes to Ashes. I because, for you because I know that that you and I share similar views when it comes to the way we view shows and films. Yeah. Um, because you come from the film studies right. mind. Okay. I would recommend not watching Ashes to Ashes. All right. Uh, this is the next question, Peter. I want you to read it because. <laughs> oh, philosophy students who are Madagascar characters. <laughs> um, that's. The question, I, yeah, I'm just reading it. Um, Wait, what? Are, are there enough in the class? Yeah, um, would you want yeah. me to give... Okay, um, so Holly, you know the Madagascar characters, right? Yeah. Basically, who would, out of everyone in our class, who would be who in the Madagascar movies? <laughs> um, can I give my pre-prepared answers? Yes. Tell me if you agree. I'm not with my answers and just agree and disagree with yours. Okay. Uh, you can give your own answers if you want. I don't mind. If you think I'm wrong. Cool. Um, I think Peter is Alex. Yes. Um, oh. Oh, I'm accused of that. I'm Marty, which makes sense because Alex and Marty are like brothers or whatever. Um, Holly is Gloria. Interesting. Um, Mr. No, sorry. Um, I think I'll be King Julian. Do you want to be King Julian? It's so much more fun. No, I think you make. I think you make a better Alex. Just so I think. Mm, I feel like Alex. I feel like King Julian is more is more enjoyable to be around. All right, in that Alex. in that case, Mr. <laughs> is Alex. <laughs> and can I be that? Can I be that plain guy who dies? Why do you keep changing your mind? No, you can't be. The, on, you can't be the fucking dead skeleton that hung from the tree. No, you can't. I'm gonna be Maurice. You wanna be Maurice? All right, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, then Anna is Melman. Can I be one of the penguins instead? They sort of yeah, to figure be it out. Penguin. I wanna be more. He's not a penguin. He's one of the lemurs. Yeah, I know. Can I be, but can I be, a be monkey? More. Can I be the one of the monkeys? Okay, this is this is the last poo. this is the last time you're changing your mind, right? You can be the right. are you the quiet monkey or the talking monkey? Which one do you think? <laughs> the quiet one. Obviously the talking. Obviously the talking monkey. All right, you actually no, you be the talking monkey. I'll be the quiet monkey. So you're the zebra, act, so you can't change your mind. Change your list. Fuck off. Um, so you're not quiet. Uh, yeah, that's true. Actually, yeah, I think I'd be Marty then in that case. All right, uh, Holly's Mort. And... Trans Mort, I don't remember Mort. The little that funny really, though. like high pitch thing that loves Kate. Oh uh, yeah. Kate loves his feet. What, the, the, yeah, the one with the foot face. <laughs> yeah, he's always trying to touch. It. Actually, maybe I don't want to be Mort. <laughs> you, too late. Um... But this is the one who's got it all more figured out though. I guess. Actually, yeah, no. Mr. <laughs> should be Skipper then in that case. <laughs> Isn't Skipper the really stupid one? No, that's Rico. Okay, yeah, okay, that's fine then. Anna is Melman. Uh, I think um, I think Ella and Danya would be like Kowalski and Rico. Oh no 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 they would be sorry they'd be Kowalski and Private I think. Um, it's like one of those like top ten like watch Mojo stuff. Wait no 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 sorry no no Ella Ella and Danya are um Kowal uh, are Rico and Private. Um, He's reading through a list of Madagascar characters and just picking it around a bunch. My, Milo wow. is Milo's Kowalski. Um, Mio is 
I reckon Mia would probably be Gloria, in all honesty. I can, I can kind of imagine that for some reason. Um, I don't know, who do you think Miss would be? I think. Don't say it. No, oh, because, because like, someone who's smart, like, what's her name, Black? Maurice. Maurice kind of controls everything. Yeah, so she's Maurice. It seems like fitting, yeah. But that makes you King Julian, then, in that case. Oh, I thought, I still want to be that monkey. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. No, 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 no. Theo, uh, Theo, Theo's yeah. King Julian. Theo's King Julian. Um, you would really honest. And Tasman is... Um, I reckon Tasman would probably be Makunga. You know, the evil lion. So I, I, I don't know if this, if this list works. I think so. we can be subjected to animal characters. <laughs> I absolutely disagree with the watch mojo of this. Yeah, fuck you, whoever asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> I've already forgotten who it was. Um... <laughs> Wait, I'm trying. Let me go back on the list. Um, I think we've got a few more here. Um, all right, here's a good one. What is your dream career? Director. Nice, Holly. Um, it changes from day to day. What is it today? Silence. Forensic psychologist, maybe. I don't know. Like work with you say politician because you can't make up your mind <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was it what was it on saturday what was your dream career on saturday nothing <laughs> what's your dream career tomorrow i'll let you know what was your dream career yesterday uh i think it was uh human trafficking not to be a human trafficker to <laughs> to work on the no. angle where you get human trafficked no, <laughs> to work to like stop human trafficking. Oh, okay. Not, I mean, you can't stop it. That would never happen. But yeah, you know, yeah. help. Help me, please. <laughs> um, my dream career, uh, probably to get out of human trafficking. I would say. <laughs> Interesting. Fair yeah. No, no, no. I want to be an actor. Uh, that's probably obvious from anyone who watches my channel or knows who I am, I guess. I would do that too, but... What, acting? Yeah. Well, we're making a, we're, we're still making that short film, aren't we? Because I, I, yeah. I want to do that, you know? I used to want to be, I wanna be a, a, a playwright. What changed your so mind? So, it, it's really two different industries. I like the film industry, but I also like the human trafficking industry. Right. So it, it changes. A lot of money in human trafficking. Huh? A lot of money. Not money in human trafficking. Yeah. There's none. You could be a billionaire. So much money in human trafficking. You can make so much money in human trafficking. I'm not planning to human traffic anyone. I'm planning to help the people who know. are being trafficked. I, I don't know. Yeah, Holly, I know, but you know. Motivation. There's seem... a lot of money to make in human trafficking. And they're also close to politicians, so you get away with it anyway. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Holly. Keeping an eye on you. Um, oh, here's a good one. Uh, friends during lockdown? A very vaguely asked question that I think I can understand. I refuse to from. watch Friends during lockdown. I refuse to watch Friends in general. No, I think they mean, have we, like, been keeping in touch with friends during I see. lockdown? Um... I think I have someone. Um... <laughs> no, I, I think I have. Um, I, I, I don't know. I've been messaging people every now and then. Um... I'm having a social distance meet up on Thursday, which should be nice. Because it's my replies have been a bit um, in general. Yeah, that's because I always feel like bad because I'm like I'll be talking to my friends and then and then, you know we'll be like discussing like so like yesterday I was talking to it on, on my group chat and then and then like I get distracted and then when I get distracted in lockdown my phone just will stay on, on my desk and I'll do something else. So it, normally my phone is always in my pocket because I don't know if I'm going out, but I know I'm not going out, so I don't have my phone on me as much. Because yeah. of that, it seems like I'm, I'm refusing to reply to people. Yeah. And then it, it was all cleared up. Yeah. But nevertheless, from my one note to self. Yeah. And you, I'm still not going to carry my phone around. I quite like not having it on me. Just leaving it around and it's quite refreshing and peaceful. 
here's actually a very Correct. here's an interesting question um what app do you hate but use it anyway oh good question yeah what tiktok Instagram. oh my god um <laughs> i forgot you unironically use tiktok um for me i just don't have apps that i hate so i i just you well like i don't hate instagram like i do admit it's like a very like dry awful shallow piece of shit but like that doesn't really make me hate it i just kind of accept it for what it is like i don't really use i don't don't really use it for any other reason than to message people or like just piss about really that's all i really use it for and so i can't really hate something that i don't even use properly i guess but if there was an app that I don't have that I do hate and I refuse to ever download, it would probably be TikTok, you know? Mm. Like, I don't know. I, apps are confusing things, to be honest. It's also a pro not subscription app. That's probably quite bad as well. Question? Um, I got, there's a few here that I just spotted. Um, none of them are very good, though. Um, it doesn't matter. All right, here's a nice, simple one. What makes you feel good about yourself? Oh, good question. Yeah. I sleep, so I'm not awake. <laughs> you that ashamed of yourself when you're awake? Um, my... You know what? I'm, I'm quite a good cook. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you've mentioned in the past your cooking abilities. Uh, yeah, I'm proud of my cooking. I'll, I'll say that. Um... I don't know. And my music taste. It's yeah. eclectic. You know what? I think it's pretty good. I was about to say, I, I, I think I've I've got a very diverse taste in music, so I feel like I can yeah. enjoy anything and it will make me feel a bit better, you know? Yeah, agreed. What about you, Harley Hawk? Uh, I don't know. Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I like my friends. Aww. And that's what I like about myself, Aww. that I have good friends. Did you hear that, Peter? Yes. Sorry. The friends thing. Yeah. But I don't, do, I don't know if that counts. Really? To be honest. Yeah. Mm, I disagree so with that. I'll shut the answer down. But I think, should, is, is it not self-reflection? Because now it makes me look bad that I haven't picked my friends. <laughs> so, no, no. Suddenly I'm the bad guy who hasn't gone... <laughs> The thing I like about myself is my friend. All right. Well, what about what about this? Ne- what about this next question? It might it might. Be it's, it's like it's like when when people say like um if if your house burned down you could say one thing what would you say when someone goes like my family get lost come on <laughs> yeah that wasn't the question. And Peter, That's this is fair. this is this well yeah the family can save themselves if they're real family. Exactly. Um, here's here's a question that will give you a chance to redeem yourself. What makes a person beautiful to you? Ooh, question. Um, mm, good intentions. Oh, that's nice. Is this, is this internally beautiful? Uh, either, really, I guess. Well, externally, I'm very collective about that as well, so I can't really be honest. But internally, definitely good intentions. Yeah, that so is. I think that's a very important thing that humans need. I think we, we that we ignore, I think fact that even if someone does something that might go wrong although i get that like good intentions aren't good enough sometimes yeah the, just just like like the thought behind something isn't always like good enough to justify the act but in general the the the, the desire to generally want what's best for others and society yeah um when it comes to internally uh, i guess the person just has to be like nice I guess um, I I really like f- sort of like free spirited people. I, I'm quite attracted to them. You know, people that don't really let a lot bother them and just get on with what they like. You know. Um, externally, I, I don't know if this is weird or not, but like I I'm really attracted to eyes for some reason. Like, eyes. If someone has oh, this is, oh, is the window of the soul. Like if yeah, exactly. Like if I see someone who has really nice eyes, I'm gonna think to myself, like I really like this person on a physical and mental level, you know. Because of the eyes. Yeah, it's all in the eyes. I guess. 
I mean, I'm gonna fight like a serial killer. I'm gonna be honest. If if they're like a terror, if they're like a terrible person and they have nice eyes, then I might ignore the fact they have nice eyes and focus on the fact they're a what? terrible person. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, it's, so it's like a hundred lines here. It's like the way you see Vigilant and Bruce is like just the worst. It's like but he had beautiful eyes. <laughs> No, I, 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 I'm always forgiven. If, if, I, if that was the way we decide, like, so if someone was guilty of a crime, oh my not, god, <laughs> find you innocent because you have a nice eye. All I'm saying is that if I'm like looking at my soulmate, I'd like for them to have nice eyes, basically. What if they have no eyes? Um, I would be okay with that, I guess. Well, there we go. Well, because then there's something interesting about where their eyes should be, they're not there. I mean, oh, no, the, the eyes are there, but they're so, they're like, born with, like, the eyes permanently closed. Yeah, that's, that's hot. <laughs> it's unique. I don't know. Holly, what makes you attractive? Yeah, unique, what I'm makes a person thing. beautiful to you, Holly? Um, internally, um, I don't know, like, complexity of their character. Nice. If that Serious makes any sense. <laughs> so, like an um, so like an anime villain, basically. <laughs> um, just to um, I don't know. It changes, changes. Okay, what about externally? That should be easier. Well, that's the thing. Like, I have no one thing that. Oh, that photo of Jeffrey Dahmer. Would be to like about. I I can't think of one thing that I would like about someone, but if I if I like something or someone, then I I like it. But um, uh, body language I think is important. Mm. People's mannerisms and how they car uh, carry themselves. You're like a true psychologist. Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think I think psychology should be your dream career. Uh, I think it's safe to say that Holly came out the moral superiority person here in terms of morals <laughs> of people's physical appearances. So well done, Holly. <laughs> um, all right. It's got to be based on something nowadays. We'll, moral is all about. We'll end on this question. <laughs> we'll end on this question. Is, is it, uh, um, one last question. Though. Yeah, and Go Peter, on, do you want to read it out? You can read it out still. You're the, our host. No, I want you to read it out. I'm putting, well, okay. I'm putting it in the chat. Um, here we go. It's another one of these ones. Bojack Horseman characters are the Madagascar characters. <laughs> As I was gonna say, I refuse to. I refuse to answer that question. <laughs> I already... I do, to quote Tarantino, I refuse your question. I have. Um, I, it's your own question, though. My own question. You're, you asked it. You ask it. <laughs> you said it out loud. I mean, someone else asked it, but. You... There you go. Okay. Now refusing it. I'm just gonna give my pre-prepared list, and you tell me if you agree or not. Um. Um. So Bojack is Alex. Disagree. You disagree. Already, already disagreed. Okay. They're not. They're not interesting enough. <laughs> yeah, but just hypothetically, no. like. Even know. hypothetically, it wouldn't work. I Are there think... any talking horses in the Madagascar universe? Can find me one of those. <laughs> Todd is Marty. Um, yeah, but even that doesn't work. Uh, I think Diane would probably be Gloria because you know she gets chunky, chunky. <laughs> that was a horrible thing to say. That is it. <laughs> so cruel. No, I'm saying it's a good thing. Especially with the fact that there's no correlation between either of those two characters. <laughs> They're nothing like other than the fact that they're both female and they both happen. All that, even like neither of them are like overweight, overweight. <laughs> Like, you know, I know. Like normal. I know. I know. I'm saying that they're both hot. Is what I'm saying. No, I still aren't. It's not right. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. Um, I think you've dug yourself in a hole deeper than when you like film studies. I was, I'm being honest. Um, Princess Carolyn is King Julian. <laughs> uh, this list becomes more ridiculous as, as um, you get further through. Okay. Well, you have to agree with me on this one, though. Mr. Peanut Butter is Mort. Not. Yes, he is. Mr. Peanut Butter is a complex character, just like all the others. <laughs> yeah, more isn't more. Yeah, isn't more? It just kind of runs around and screams. Yeah, but they're both fucking irritating, and they're obsessed with like the main it's... character. <laughs> but it, 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 in what world is King Julian the main character? <laughs> King Ju I don't make the rules. Okay, King Julian is undeniably the main character. 
as it is. Well, so this has become well, he has he, he has the most personality out of the fucking trilogy. So you know, mm, I question all of this. <laughs> um, that's all I got. I think maybe fucking what's her name, Owl Lady. Um, she Wanda. Wanda. She's 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 Alex's mum. I think. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no wait, who would Bojack's mother be? No one is as reprehensible. I think Makunga. No, no, no. His mother, she'd be Captain Dubois, obviously. Right? No, because I feel sympathy for Bojack's mother. Oh, uh, really? I feel... Yeah. I, yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah. Alright. Um. Yeah, I guess she'd be Alex's mum then, which makes sense, because Bojack is Alex. So, you know. There you go. Are there no other questions? Um, there, are we, are we there, question now? there are maybe, like, a few, but I think, I, I, think I actually have an engagement today so i'm gonna have to oh, fair enough fair enough you know um holly you're still on mute what is going on i was um cleaning oh okay uh do you, i have do you my agree... mom coming home anytime and oh. i need to clean <laughs> uh yeah so no more questions um uh yeah this is pretty much it i guess um the end of the... i'm kind of sad to be honest um, very entertaining yeah we got some good material I was just... That was a good, I worked for like one, so I was like, this one, that's, that's my day done. That's it, that's all <laughs> work. But that's it. Perfect. Nothing work after five, it's insane. Alright, um, okay. you guys don't, yeah. have, I'm going to stop recording, you guys don't have to go like immediately, but let's at least say goodbye to the audience. Um, right, audience. Thank you for, for listening. listening. Willing to listen to all of this. Yeah, we love you very much. Impressive. Um, bye bye. Bye.